What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Flagrant 2 Podcast. No easy buckets. Mm-hmm. Analysis by assholes. Water cooler commentary for your sports needs. Mm. I'm Andrew Schultz. I'm here with Akash Singh. Real yeah. life cat is back in the building. Yeah, it was Welcome good. Welcome back, bro. Uh, first of all, we want to apologize for the audio last week. Yeah, that shit sucked, bro. Yeah, dude. Fuck. It was bad, man. Alex. Alex fucked up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you have bro. four jobs. Wow, really? <laughs> you have four jobs, wow. dog. That's all you got to do it. is do the audio, change God. The angles Damn for it. the cameras, <laughs> set up the audio, listen to produce it. Produce the live show. <laughs> produce the fucking pictures in the background for the YouTube views. You know what it is. He, he not Jamaican? Just, he was distracted oh. by all the fucking dicks in his DM. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, busy whacking off and favoring. How many of those did you put a heart next to so it's in a special folder on your uh, i what is it called? iCloud. All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's beautiful. Hey, um, man. Yo, congrats to Kaz. Oh, thank this, you. Can bro. we talk about this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uninterrupted. Yes, thank you, thank you. I was, uh, I've been in LA for the past couple of days, uh, shooting a new show with them and Spotify. So shout out to Uninterrupted and Braun, and for everybody who's worried that um, I'm leaving Flagrant Two, that's never gonna happen. Don't be worried, bro. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> I was like, fuck you guys. You get what I mean? Nobody worries, Nobody gives a Nobody fuck about you, fuck God fuck you. God damn it. Put a Nigerian hex on the audio the second he left. <laughs> you ain't gonna replace me. Oh <laughs> I'm see, see how this broad check I, look. If I was gone one more week, there's been another Nigerian here so fast. <laughs> I was already putting out my feelers. <laughs> you would have had Andre Godala sitting here. <laughs> is he Nigerian? Yes, he is Nigerian. That's why he's so pompous. <laughs> <laughs> Proud ass like Nigerian, bro. Yeah, bro. Man. Dude, they would have got me out of here expeditiously. Yeah, yeah, quickly, yeah. But, All right, well, we're happy that. for you, man. That's Thank what's you. up. Yeah, tell Appreciate Uninterrupted that, to come get us, man. Yo, we will. Did you, um, we will, definitely. Did you, uh, you just have Richard Jefferson running your main podcast? <laughs> fucking Muppet ass voice. Get out of here. <laughs> Let my goofy ass voice on the podcast. Listen, uh, I, I, to not offend my new political connects, I'm not going to say anything about Richard Jefferson. No, nah, shout out to Richard. Where is no. he playing now, Richard Jefferson? He's on the bench. Nobody oh. give a fuck. Nobody give a fuck. Wherever he playing, he's on the bench. He's playing with the Ball Brothers and Valtas <laughs> Villanacas or some shit. Fucking play playing for Andy Villanacas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker playing for a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> <laughs> Valtas Valabufinus. <laughs> Why no is a place oh, for God damn it. Yo. Yeah. We got a big week, man. We got a big Wait, week. did you fuck anything out there? No, I did not. I was uh, out there on business and business only. Gay! <laughs> <laughs> fuck goes to Cali. You know, dip your dick is there was no, there, there was no white girl excursion. Dude, there was nothing, bro. Are you kidding me? You know how good pussy smells in Cali? I can imagine. They just wear imagine. skirts all smell day. Like the weed? I was focused, nah, it's, though. It's, it's, they smell like the wow. weed. I'm about to say, I don't know. Listen, I don't know what kind of Cali white woman vagina smells like marijuana, but as much as I enjoy to indulge in... Oh, I'm saying the weed and white woman. You're not doing it. I don't want to mix the both. You're not mixing the both together. Nah, I'm good. Man. I was chilling, man. I was all, I was there focused. I was all business, man. All I'm saying is that winter New York pussy be stinking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffed in some fucking Lululemons, walking around all day and shit. Oh boy, the fucking long johns on. Come fucking to the forever crib. twenty one tights. Bro, they've been. Trucking around New York City yeah. for 15 hours straight. Fuck Come over to the house at 3 a.m. Wolfing. Stuffed in a stuffed in Canada a goose on. Yeah, you got a fucking <laughs> goose. You got goose feathers on. Get your ass in the shower. It smells like goose. The fuck. Why. Where's Stormy Daniels when you need her? Oh, fuck yeah. Stormy Daniels. Yeah. Stormy Daniels would fuck the money up, dog. What Bro, is she doing? First of all, did you see the interview? Yeah, I watched, I watched a little bit. I liked interview. when she said you weren't a victim. I don't You're watch this bitch unless she's taking cat. <laughs> <laughs> ne- never will I watch a porn star just talk. No, that I shit mean, is it's dumb. weird because you know what it is? Because like you watch her and you forget like she's like a middle aged white woman, and it's like it's like you're wa- this is like someone's mom. Like she's like. She like if I, I've never the funny thing is oddly you never enough, as, as much as much pornography I've watched in my life I've yeah. never watched a Stormy Daniels but I've known her like her, right. the name you know is familiar but I've never yeah. been like ooh Stormy Daniels that really yeah. that doesn't really get my juices flowing yeah. so I'm just watching some old white lady talk about sex so casually on primetime television what she say happened with the president Did he do any freak shit she said he said something about like Donald Trump being like perched. 
<laughs> son, if he got his ass ate, I'm voting for yeah. him in 2020. So that's how double oh, down I am. Oh, you missed big have. developments, dog. Andrew got his ass ate last uh, week. Really? Son, I got you I saw, I saw, the, I saw a, a, a part of it, and that's when I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just tune in next son, week. Son, I got ass eating shamed. <laughs> <laughs> son, last night, I got you know ass eating you know shamed why? by a girl. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, this is recent. Son, I'm uh. texting his girl. She's she's young. She, she, yeah. she's, she's like 19 years old. It's too yeah. stupid. I shouldn't be texting her first place. I was about to say, first off, 19 is you. Are, that is right this is on born the in border. 1999. That's right almost, on the border, she, she almost don't even know what Y2K McDonald's. She ain't ready for escargot. <laughs> she, she ain't ready for fine dining NSYNC. delicacy. She don't remember NSYNC's first run. <laughs> she was born in 1999? 99? <laughs> Dog, she was one year old when the thong song came out. So, <laughs> it's bad. Bro. That is rough. It's bad. Anyway, That's rough for even you. But, uh, but I, I said, did get a lot of like, yo, Kaz, we need you back because there's only so much ass-eating talk I could take. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's <laughs> incredible. And if y'all haven't had it, y'all can't speak on it. Nah, but I, I just right. opened up to this girl right. and I was like, yo, yeah, what's, what's up? I was like, as long as you got nice feet and eat ass, we could work on it. Wow. And then and she thought I was joking. And she's like, no, I had like a horrible experience where like a guy brought me over to his house and all he wanted was his ass eating. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds right. And she was like, no, I can never do that again. Blah, blah, blah. That's so weird. She's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, I got to go. I'm getting PTSD. Wow. I just hit her with a hand wave, bro. She shamed you. I'm about my life, man. Listen, you know I'm what 34, it is, bro. I know what I like. I'm How not going to be ashamed for it. What was in this man's ass? You got PTSD. You got the same shit war vets bro, got? He was <laughs> he was probably wearing Lululemons all day. <laughs> and lemons. She got shell shot? <laughs> yeah, for real. That is uh, she need therapy? quite disturbing. She's a jarhead, bro. She's mad disturbed, dog. She probably, like, fucking, you know, she probably, like, goes to massage parlors, starts, like, Freaking out and shit. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, no, no, not again. Just runs out. Anyway, whatever. You just got to stick to your convictions. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel you, dude. I feel um, you. Let's talk some sports. Tribe, huh? Join the tribe, man. Yo, bro, I'm good, bro. I'm totally good. You never know what it eating, bro? I, no, you know what it is, man? I, I've. <sighs> Remember when he said he'd beat up his girlfriend if he put a finger this is, in his bro, ass? Bro, like, it's, I'm, I'm exit only. My ass is exit only, You don't dog. have to put the tongue in. Nah, bro, that's even it. too close. I don't even want you knocking on the door. <laughs> like, don't even... I don't even want to know that you're in the neighborhood. Just, like, stay far away. All right, like, fair yeah. Let's get into some sports. How about um, that shit? Okay. <laughs> so, the week in flagrancy. Yeah. Um, I think we got to start with uh, Gronkowski, man. Gronk yeah, man, was Gronk. wilding. He was in Miami wilding. Mm. My man is a hero. He's yeah. not even wilding. Is he really wilding? Bro, I th he looked, like, extremely... He's extremely grunk. messed up. He's grunk and grunk. Molly. It was Molly at, at the bare minimum. I mean, the energy was crazy. He's jumping all over the place. He's free So where, on where was this? Was this Ultra? Was this was this in Miami, uh, right? Every party in Miami, I assume, is Ultra. But no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is. But him, he's there. Shaq is there. He's good. He's like dancing. He's going crazy. And These him are telltale tell signs of a man on Molly. First off, that face yeah. is killing shirts me. off. Oh, yeah. He's definitely sweating. Yep. Eyes also wide a professional fucking open. Ad, let me tell you something. If I pr played professional football oh. and I was in shape, ain't no way I'm keeping a shirt on nah. anytime there's holes outside. Yeah. True. And well, he's not going to sweat. A finely tuned athlete don't have a high metabolism. No, I'm but fine with it. you sweating, but you're grinding on another dude. This is true. That yeah, is that takes true. drugs to do. Yeah, but he he's don't give the, a fuck. That's Gronk. Well, I don't. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? That's so, Molly. I don't understand how <laughs> Gronk. I mean, I, I do understand, but it's just funny to me. How we hear all these Odell trade rumors because Odell's a distraction, oh, right? Here right. Here but your man Gronk literally oh, has his God. dick on the here back of Shaquille O'Neal's neck. Yeah, oh, and everyone's just like, "Oh, wow, well, this is Gronk." Because that's not illegal. Coke is illegal. Who? First off, Odell didn't do any coke. Okay? But there's coke in he, there. So, he, so you mean to tell me here. you're not looking at this picture? You there's don't not, think there's no evidence of cocaine? Okay. If we so, saw Gronk, well, there's no evidence of cocaine with uh, the pictures Johnny Manziel had with cocaine were a mm, big deal. Yes. White but, powder, right? So you don't That's think. A big deal. So you don't look at this picture and don't think you know, there I'm isn't just, there isn't cocaine at least thirty meters from. Yeah, concerns me the most absolutely. about this picture. One of these people. You know what concerns me the some, most about this picture is not Gronk. It's Shaq. What the mm. fuck are you doing at this place? Yeah. First of, you are fifty. Shaq? You old as you got on the fucking jeans from the nineties. You and Tim Duncan go to the same goddamn store to buy jeans. Take your old ass home. First off, I'm very much against athletes wearing their own jerseys when they're not performing their sports. Yeah, me too. So like, if you're walking around with the back end, I mean, I'm not because it tell makes it that. very uncomfortable to go up to them. It does because it's like you can't be like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pretend I don't know that Shaq right there. I think <laughs> like, I've told this story on this podcast, but yeah. like where I went up to, I was going to go up to Darrell Revis because mm -hmm. he was wearing a 24 Jets jersey. 
And then we're going to ask, hey, are you the Royal Revis? Yeah, and if I'm wrong... I'm really racist. Yeah. Because no, I just walked up here. to a black guy with a Darrell Rivas jersey. And he's like, so wait, you just think every black guy wearing a Rivas jersey is Darrell Rivas? But I'm 100% sure it was him. It just so happens. It was probably some practice shit. He's to coming be, from to practice. be fair, if I was a famous pro athlete, I'd probably pull that shit on you all the time. What? Just to be like, oh, so you just think all black people look alike? But it'd like really be me and <laughs> shit. But like, are you Shaquille O'Neal? It's like, no, you think every seven foot, 300 pound dude <laughs> <laughs> is Shaquille O'Neal, you racist motherfucker. Just to fuck with people, just because you're rich or whatever. But the but, reality is the NFL is the ultimate meritocracy. Yeah. Right? Because uh, Malcolm Butler wasn't even allowed to get the flu. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, Malcolm Butler got the flu and they benched him for the Super Bowl. They're like, how and dare then, you get sick for the then, fucking Super yeah. Bowl? Gronkowski is out here wilding at the bare minimum, yeah. just wilding in my head. This is not Patriots football right here. Name another Patriots player that can act like this. I mean, the, name any. The, the, the most overrated, overstated thing in the world is the Patriot way. What's the Patriot way really? You know Be good I mean? or get fired. Shut All right, well, you man, stay you, in you, line. I think, they got rid of, I think they got rid of Malcolm Butler. I think they fucked up. Mm. But I think their gamble. I think what he was doing is mind games for the next year. Really? I think I think uh, Belichick was saying, I'm going to sit someone for the Super Bowl, mm. a major player, just to let everyone on this team know. Just let know, people know I ain't fucking around. I ain't fucking around. You better button it up and do exactly what I say. And then it backfired. They lost. But if yeah. they had won, nobody is going against the grain that next year. But don't yeah, you think, Yeah, but like, you also lost, and the quarterback who beat you had like 400 yards passing. Yeah. Throwing Smoked it all over the field. You have a quarterback. Throwing to, the, up. throwing to the exact spot that your star no, quarterback No, I'm not, I'm not saying been. he didn't fuck up, but I'm yeah. saying I think the plan Yeah, I going think he outsmarted it, himself, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, but really. he's planning for next year, and that's yeah. what kind of uh, coach he is. Whatever. It don't fucking matter. Point is, Grunk is wild in, but Grunk is allowed to do this. Certain Grunk, players. Grunk like. has, Grunk has, he's in that, he's in that fucking rare era of athlete where, you know, I guess like Manny Ramirez was there one time. Joe Namath. Like, it's the Joe, Joe Namath, Namath and I guess. And like, even to a lesser extent, like J.R. Smith, like after he won the championship, we're just like, oh, it's just J.R. being J.R. Even has if J.R. done like, anything though? No, I mean, not really, but like before, all right, before the chip, he would wild out or whatever. And then he wowed out again when he won the chip where he was just like going everywhere with no oh, shirt, with off, shirt and off and just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. bugging the fuck out. I was like, ah, it's JR, he's a champ, whatever. But your man Gronk is like, he's just, no one gives a fuck. It's like, oh, it's just him. He's a party animal. He's an all-American boy and yada, yada, yada. And I guess it's cool. And I have no problem with it. That, that's my thing. My thing is like, we always say on the show, just keep that same energy with everybody, dog. Right. Like, I have absolutely no problem with this. You are a star athlete. You're probably the most, one of four, one of the four most unguardable players in football. Sure. Right? If you want to go and party, history. but one of the best tight ends, at, at worst, like the second or third best tight end ever to live, right? And you're still playing if you want to play next year or not. If... He wants, you're a super rich athlete, you're famous, you're single, you know yeah. what I mean, you're Miami. If you want to be at Ultra, whatever festival he's at, dancing on Shaq's shoulders, fist pumping, twerking, whatever, cool. Yeah. You play a game for a living. Yeah. Let these dudes do what they feel like doing. Yeah. Don't give Odell shit because he wants to go and dance at Drake's house. Don't give Malcolm Butler shit because he wants to catch the flu. I don't know. Like, my shit is just keep the same energy with well, all Odell these people. Odell hasn't won yet. So, but that's the thing. Like, that's so, that's you so win stupid. Nah, we talked about this. Listen, Winners it's a get, job. Hey. It, sales jobs, I worked one sales job in my life. Motherfuckers who sold well will go out at lunch, get drunk, come back, Boston say shit because he gets his numbers and that's all we really care about. There As we fans, go. we want you to win. If gotta you want to be a great yo. humanitarian, great. Mm. Gotta win. The most important thing is winning. Jordan but, could go gamble game three of the motherfucking NBA Finals mm -hmm. because he's going to win you that Finals. But y'all saw, I mean, I don't, the whole you thing. You gotta win, bro. Football is a team sport until it isn't, right? Like, What you mean? Everyone's like, oh, Odell hasn't won yet, right? Yeah, hasn't. But, you know, you got hurt and you get the second worst record in the league. Clearly, this motherfucker is valuable. Clearly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you're a better fairness, team with him on the field. For sure. He's valuable. He's going to get a lot of money, but he hasn't won. There's winning and then there's losing. Okay. And it don't matter if you win 16 games. If you mm. lose in the Super Bowl, you lost. Mm. And if you're you know, you're going to get paid. Yeah. You're going to get paid out your ass, absolutely. Mm. But you're not going to get forgiven. Once you start winning... 
you will get forgiven. And if you take a picture on a fucking yacht with, what was it, Trey Songs? The Trey Songs. Yeah. Days before a playoff game, and yeah. then you lose that playoff game. And then you're in Lambeau Field with remember. the shirt off, yeah. like, yeah, maybe we good, we got this. And then you got fucking smoked by yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Yo, it is interesting because, like, anytime a quarterback goes on vacation before Super Bowl, mm -hmm. like that week off that they have, and they lose, it's because of vacation. Yeah. But when they win, nobody says anything about it. I mean, no. I'm sure Tom Brady has gone on vacation the week what, before a Super what can you Bowl tell that every, that? Single, mm -hmm. every because, single year. Because what can you tell yeah, them? Yeah, we're that? just looking for an excuse for why they lost. Like, they, going on Trey Song's yacht had nothing to do with why the Giants lost. Yeah. They just weren't good enough to win. They were, gonna, they were probably going to lose regardless. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, they were absolutely going like, to lose. There's been, like, what, like... Maybe two or three teams who have won a playoff game on the road in Lambo, yeah. like in the past, like twenty thirty, some some wild statistic like that. Yeah, yeah but that's life. Gonna, yeah, but just yeah. don't be enjoying losing. No, yeah. but this that's is what it is. <clears throat> this is life. If yeah. somebody, if me and my friend go get drunk the day before a test, yeah. he passes. Cool, it's not a big deal. Right. I fail. Probably because I got drunk. Yeah. So I'm going to start looking for reasons. That you only got to look for reasons when you lose. Right, right. Otherwise, you're not looking for any reasons. Mm -hmm. That's life. I don't know. I think it's just, you know, it's we're, we're, in the, we're in the social media age and it's the court of public opinion. And whatever I see, <clears throat> you know, I mean, as a fan or as a pundit or a sports, you know, analyst as these people do on TV, whatever I see, I'm going to attribute to whatever is going on on the field. So right. if it's like, yo, if... Your entire team isn't there, and it's just you guys, and you're an important part. And not only do you lose, but you kind of stink it up. And you, I remember Odell missing a pretty big catch yeah, that might have yeah. swung that game in Lambeau, where like that's a catch he makes 99 out of 100 times, right. and he would have took it to the house, and he did it. You put that all, you put that out there. You know what I'm saying? Like once you're out there, so I guess that's that's. That's the luxury Gronk has. Like, Gronk does this all the time, but when it's showtime, the motherfucker performs. He does. And, you know, nobody could really so, stop him. So. If you want the freedom to do all that shit, you want to go on the boats, you mm -hmm. want to uh, party with girls who yeah. are doing cocaine, all that kind of stuff, just win a ring. That's <laughs> really kill. what it comes down to. Just Kyrie kill. was on that yacht full of white girls after he won the championship. We all forgot. Happily. I think yeah. that was before the chip, but, you know. I think it was after. I think it was after. I'm pretty sure. But... Either way, so many times I saw Kyrie with lost, white women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Guys, there's more white women. Yeah, this the is country's a, seventy percent white. No, well, you know, if you're a pro athlete, you know what? There's a lot more white. There's a lot more white. <laughs> no, well, I mean, there's going to be a lot more women in general. I don't yeah. think black women are going. Oh, I don't fuck basketball players. Sure they do. That's what they say. Name a black woman. Name a, a group of black women who are like I refuse to my, fuck black basketball players. My point was actually players. sheer numbers. Uh, Since there's more white women on earth. More of them are going to throw themselves at you when you're yeah. famous. I'm famous, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's yeah. more. It's like that's not a big deal. Your, that, yeah, yeah, there's not a big you deal. You stay thinking there's, I'm you know. disagreeing with you when I'm just asking. I feel like you be repeating shit I say. I, I, I act like you didn't hear me say point it. To it, motherfucker. I'm just. I thought you just your point. said the same shit. <laughs> well, this isn't like you know. It's the it's. This isn't the type of podcast where we're that we're talking down on this behavior. I want people to be perfectly clear. I encourage this type of behavior. All I'm saying is, like, we shouldn't be giving people, like, this is not going to determine whether somebody wins or loses the football game. If you're fucking partying in April yeah, on on whatever you're doing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, these are human beings. These guys are millionaires. What the fuck do you think they're doing when they're not playing sports? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, after practice, after being with your family, after whatever, like, you have to do something to entertain yourself. And if I was a under 30 millionaire... You goddamn right! I'll be doing all this shit. I'm all of it. off season. I don't mind as much, but if it's during the season and I see you doing this and you don't win, all yeah. right, cool. But then that's what we're gonna no, blame. I think that. that's the difference. Yeah, the only you reason that. that you guys make this much money is because we are that invested in the game. That's well mm -hmm. said, yeah. right? Like all we we are we identify with our team. You're yeah. a Cowboys fan, right? Yeah. So if the Cowboys are losing. And you see Cowboys out partying, mm -hmm. you're furious because you feel bad when they're when they lose. My money, my time, my energy, my, my is spent. happiness is so yeah. you're out here. I'm seeing you party, and I'm feeling sad. Mm -hmm. So your partying is making me feel sad. And you don't owe me shit, but I also have the right to be upset. Absolutely, that you're doing this. And on some level, they do kind of owe you because the only reason they're getting paid that is because you care that much. Now, yeah. if you know who can party all the fuck they want, lacrosse players. <laughs> Professional lacrosse players can do. party all the fuck they want, and they probably do, right? Because we don't give a fuck about lacrosse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody cares if there is a professional lacrosse league somewhere, and nobody gives a fuck about it. Yeah. They're making the same as guys who work at Home Depot, yeah. and that's fine. And that's fine. Like lacrosse, they like lacrosse. Play it, but once you start playing in the NBA, you start playing Major League Baseball, soccer, one of these sports where you're making millions and millions of dollars. 
there's a very good argument to, no, you don't get to just party. Yeah. Yeah. You're making this much money because of how deeply we care about this game. Mm. We're willing to pay a hundred dollars to go see the Knicks lose. I, you're willing to pay five thousand dollars for a Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah, to, you know, for it's, a Super Bowl just, I ticket. Guess a lot of this just kind of is attributed to just looking the part. Bro, your like, whole dog. day is around it. Think yeah. about it. For there are people whose entire Sunday mm. is built around, like there are parents who have families. Your road trip and your tailgate. Fuck and a tailgate. They'll trip. sit on the couch yeah. and ignore their wife for three <laughs> hours straight. Like, ignore church. Their wife with cancer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And they'll say shit like, honey, I'm with you all week. I'm at the fucking treatments. I'm uh, getting the, whatever that shit is that gets it out of you. What is it called? Chemotherapy. Yeah. But just give me my three fucking hours to watch the the the, the Patriots play. Mm. And it means that much. So you know what? You owe it to them not to party. I'm sorry. You fucking owe it to them. Well, the only I, reason you make this money is because we care. And with that care comes our disappointment. Nah, if you win, you get that pass. Yeah. Oh, that is that is a great point. Let me uh, let me clarify. You owe it to us until you win. Yeah. As long as you're winning. Michael Jordan, by all means, play some blackjack if that calms you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, matter of fact, if you're winning all that partying in my head, it's just you blowing off some steam. Yeah. It must be really stressful. <laughs> must be really stressful being be victorious. Stressful beating the snot out yeah. of the Knicks every Oh my God. <laughs> must be really hard. Please, why don't we just, you know, put some oh cards God. on the table? Yeah. If he didn't gamble, pump? he would have actually punched Xavier yeah. McDaniel. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He'd have actually thrown that yeah. punch. <laughs> exactly. He needs this, guys. Yeah. He ne I'll make all the excuses People, for you if you exactly. win. Exactly. People will make excuses. I'm like a wife. Of a, of a really wealthy of a really wealthy guy. I'm like mm. Trump's wife. I'm Melania. We're all we're all trophy wives. Yeah, we're a fucking. As long as you bring home the money. That's what a fan is. Is a fucking trophy wife. Yeah. Yes. As long yeah. as we're bring fucking home. trophy Just wives. Just yeah. win. If you will, win, you didn't cheat. I will make any single. I'm looking the other way. Oh, yeah. Fuck you it. got lipstick on the collar. You got hickeys on your cock. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Let that hickey heal up. I'll get back to sucking your dick. <laughs> <laughs> but if you lose, it's an issue. But if you lose, we got to have a talk. Why are you disrespecting gotta, me in public? I'm taking Why are you the kids and going to my, I'm my going sister's to, house. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm taking the kids and I'm going to a I'm winner. I'm going to the Brooklyn Nets. Yes. I'm going to a winner somewhere. <laughs> At least the Brooklyn Nets play hard. Exactly, God exactly. damn it. Listen, I could be disappointed with another team I don't yeah. give a fuck about. Yeah. That's what we are. We're trophy wives mm. as fans, so don't be upset at us. Mm. All you need to do is win and you get carte blanche anything. Mm. Mm -hmm. God bless. That's the Gronk rule. And there just was, an, I remember, Gronk. there was an entire drive in the Super Bowl that was just Gronk. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a Gronk. beast. That yeah. is yeah. literally that is literally Tom Brady's security blanket, though. The reason like, he's playing he's, football at, at forty one years old. I forgot yeah. what I forgot what I was reading. I think I was actually talking with um, Andrew Son. Hawkins or some shit, and he was basically like, "Yo, they don't run plays. Son, there's no they go through anything. reads, and if all else fails, they just throw it to Gronk." <laughs> Tom Brady put out a book called The TB Twelve Method. It mm. should be one page. <laughs> <laughs> it should just have a picture of Gronkowski. <laughs> That's it. TB Twelve. Yeah. Have Gronk. End of book. Throw it to him. Very simple. Yeah. You could have put it out in an out Instagram. Three yeah. little dots. Swipe through. He's, I mean, don't get me wrong. Tom Brady's a great quarterback, but yeah. is he playing at this level with Dow Gronkowski? Of course no. not. No. Of course not. And people He's will say- He's definitely giving him a lot more of a shelf life. Just like Odell's giving Eli's a, son, a longer if, shelf life. If, if we have Eli, if we re-sign, and I'm saying we as if I'm like this big Giants fan, I'm not, I'm not going to front, but- they re-sign Odell, and then they get Saquon Barkley, or they mm. get someone who actually run the ball. That adds four years to Eli's career. Yeah. You're still not yeah. going to be good enough until you get a good line. Yeah, you can't. You could can have the. You can have motherfucking there. the Flash uh, behind center. We already worked this out yeah. yesterday. It's not that hard. There's nobody. Need, uh, <laughs> just, uh, I know. We just need Andrew just, on the line. That's, that's it, <laughs> bro. If I, you just get four of me, and it's easy. It's not that, but bro, yeah. just. Push him to the left a little, and then he goes through. What, it's like, how much room do you need? How much room do you need, right? Just look. Hey, how about you? If I was the coach, oh, I keep thinking about what how, Like, what do you oh, even man. say as a coach? What you know, do you even you say as a coach? wild to me, though? Please, tell me what, what's you know, wild to me is they can't push him to the left you know, a little. You know what's wild? <laughs> That's what's wild to me. This is, hey, this is what's wild to me. Oh, man. All you got to do, all you got to do is you got to stand there, uh -huh. and then when he goes hike, yeah. don't fall for the fake hike. And then when he goes hike, you just push the guy a little bit to the left. This guy pushes him a little mm. bit to the right or whatever, opposite. And then there's a little space. I honestly, you know <laughs> what? I don't understand. Like, 
the wild Why is that so this. hard? I don't think you I, shouldn't even be allowed to go to the super to the All Star game or whatever it is, the Pro Bowl. As far as far for what? For as pushing to the left. People think what you're thinking is fucked up. I, there's some, some there's a smidge of truth to it. No, and, I don't and, do that. No, no, no. no, no here's my, people son. think you're being for real on the no, podcast. No, no, no. You don't think. Like, yo, here's my Y'all think I'm not thinking about, I'm being for real? You know how, how many times I've been on the subway, I got to get out, and what do I do? I push you to the left? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm on the subway. I'm deep, right? Yeah. I'm deep. I'm not I'm not saying I'm by the door. Uh. I'm like middle <laughs> in a seat, yeah. right? The shit is jam-packed. Yeah. Jam, I'm on the way down here. Jam-packed. It's rush hour, right? I'm sitting in a seat. It's fucking rammed. Mm-hmm. Okay? I got to get out. That's defense, though. You're moving forward. You're not... Son, I play both. <laughs> when I'm what on a subway, protecting? I play Who are you both. Protecting? Let me tell you, what happens is, motherfuckers trying to get my quarterback. That's my uh. seat. Okay? <laughs> now, I should have got up and prepared to get out on the stop. I was getting out on Rector. Okay. But I'm tired. I don't want to get up. I wait till the last minute. Bing, bing. <laughs> Swim, move. Mm. <laughs> Swim, move. Move the Puerto Rican. Move the black guy. White dude, just push him in the chest. Fuck out of here, Chad. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why you it's have a point. It's not that hard. As facetious as, the, as people might think you're being. Why are you using all these words today? Motherfucker said expeditiously facetious. I'm sorry. I'm trying I, to keep up. I didn't up. say it all. Right. You know what it is. You know Joe. Where'd you go to school? Right? Ron already like you. Yeah, bro. The fuck. fuck? Richard Jefferson ass sounding motherfucker. <laughs> Golly. Spent one week with uninterrupted. You coming over here? Well, what? Hey, how serendipitous it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm trying to keep up. I'm always using these big words. God words. damn it, I'm not sure. Your, your parents still making you read Listen, SAT books? We went to public school, dog. <laughs> we didn't go to some fancy Catholic school out there where yeah. they lure basketball <laughs> players. Yeah. Kyrie out there with them St. white Patrick girls. St. Patrick was not that <laughs> yeah. fucking fancy, dog. St. Patrick was the opposite of fancy, dog. It was, just, you need it to was speak a public, public school, school where we just wore ties. And that was it. You wore ties? <laughs> yeah, that was it. We just wore ties and shirts. You didn't have uniforms. You're just like, nigga, just come in a shirt and a tie and you're good. You know nothing. Um, nah, but you know what it is? Man. Joe Thomas, right? Cleveland Browns offensive lineman. He just retired like last yeah. week or whatever. How are we celebrating this man? No, here's the thing. Clearly I don't it's think, his fault. I don't think it's hard to be an offensive lineman. I think it's hard to stay looking like an offensive lineman. What you mean by that? Like, th- there was a video of Joe Thomas getting like congratulated at Cleveland, right? Yeah. And getting like hugged by LeBron James. The dude was just playing like NFL football maybe like, what, four months ago? Yeah. yeah. He probably is Andrew size now. He's not Andrew size. Like, dog. He's slimmed down, though. No, no. Sure. He's slimmed down considerably. Like, he all these 180, old, fam. All these old. I'm How not, much you weighed up? 180, I might, be, I might be being like, I might be <laughs> like, so I might be exaggerating a little bit. Solid. I might Solid. be exaggerating a little bit. But it's a lot. It's really, I think, <laughs> the, I, don't think I don't think the Son. hard part is doing the job. I don't even know how many I've been doing lately. The hard, <laughs> the hard. I don't even know. Y'all don't even want to know. Nah, I'm sorry. Y'all don't even want to know. Y'all want to know what I've been doing my latest oh, workout set? Not what's at what's, all. What's, what's, I got less than zero interest. First of all, first of all, first of all, this is my latest workout, right? Uh-huh. I do this one. I do squats like that. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> like that, right? I do squats, right? Uh. No weight. <laughs> twenty squats, uh. right? Uh. And I do twenty push-ups immediately after, no rest, <laughs> right? Hold on, ready for the NFL? Wait for it. <laughs> Get then, this man at the combine. Then, <laughs> then I do nineteen squats, nineteen <laughs> push-ups. Oh, all the way down to zero. Well, to ten. <laughs> I, I was gonna go. I was gonna go down to zero. But lied, I believe it was you. taking so I long. You. I was like, "Yo, I gotta do this many more." Because think about it. It's it's not you do twenty and then you're done, right? It's like you gotta do twenty and then when you do nineteen, it's like you basically just did twenty again, almost. You know what I mean? So you did twenty, and nineteen, yeah. and eighteen. Yeah. How many is that? That's, That's like mad push-ups. The push-ups are harder than the squats. Son, yeah. I was busting out these push-ups. People. Mm-hmm leaving the gym. It was a hotel gym, right? <laughs> People was leaving the fucking gym, yo. Because, listen, first of all, when you see me squat, yeah. you see me hit these shit? <laughs> like that? When you see the hands? When you see the hands go up? <laughs> this shit? That right there? Look how deep I'm getting. Bro. Look at, look at from the side. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to look. Oh, fuck. Bro, I've been oh, watching fuck. mad Ronnie Coleman videos on YouTube. <laughs> Yo, you want to see me hit it? I'm going to hit it. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I fell back a little bit. That Sometimes you got to claw. You got to put you guys the form. You gotta claw the with your feet. Was, yeah, you, you know. got to claw with your toes. Dig in. Oh, fuck. Anyway, so I did that shit 20 all the way down to 10. Yeah. I did the push-ups. Joe Thomas ain't shit. doing that. Absolutely I mean, not. How? How? 
I don't I, how. <laughs> I don't know, man. How? It's, I don't think. I don't think the actual job is. Can hard. we just put you through our own makeshift combine workout? We should. First of all, because we got to do I this. Like, I'm not I, lie. How many times can you bench two twenty five? What? Two twenty five? What? On a, on a, on I'm a not bench benching press. no two twenty five. I'm not a bench guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a bench guy. I never did that. Everybody's useless, a bench guy. What time your forty? What time your with three cones? Oh, I'm under four five. Fill 40. out the shirt. I could do four four seven. I think I'm a four. No, I'd, I'd be like four five three forty. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing at? No, I read, Son, it's I only off. forty yards. Nah. I'm not gonna do that in four seconds. It's right there. What's that? It's like, son, you never forty yards. Think how many times I ran forty yards. Downstairs, <laughs> you hear the subway coming, <laughs> boom, 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 and I'm there three seconds with a swipe. Terrible. I could do a 40 yard dash with a Metro car swipe. <laughs> one one swipe, five through. Se- what do you mean? One swipe, one obviously. Swipe one swipe. I'm yeah. from New York City, I don't got a double swipe. That's a goddamn mu- son. If I double swipe, I just take that's, a cat. That's like that's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, even, that's that's a telltale sign somebody's not from New York. Like, if that they're running, 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 running swipe, oh. bong. Oh. Like nah, if I get style. hit in my thighs, I'm out. I yeah. leave. It's not It's not meant to be that. I'm like, no, I'm just gonna go. In my mind, I'm like, nah, it's gonna be a terrorist attack down here. I can't be doing it. God help me because I swipe perfect. Son, when I swipe and my shit fuck up, I look at the card. <laughs> Me too. I go, that's worn down. Yeah. Because obviously I'm a perfect swipe. I must have insufficient fare or something on this, but there's no Yo, insufficient is another big ass word, dog. I'm Yo, that's what you know. it says that's on the thing. Just say you don't got enough that's money what left. It says on the machine. Just say you don't got enough money left. Oh, Jesus. Stop. Don't, never... don't shame. Don't word shame me. Oh, we're, we're <laughs> intelligent shame. You're too don't smart. Don't do this shit. You're too smart. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but Joe Andrew, Thomas. Andrew, combine workout. Let's do it. Let's do Honestly, 40 yard dash. What do you think you could run it in? I've ran a 40 yard before. Um, we did, there's this thing called Nike Football Side. I did like years ago, or whatever. All right, what'd you get? I ran a 4 8 40. Just, That's fast. Which is decent. That's fast. decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't timed mine. I timed mine when I was fat and it was like six seconds, but that's like. Fat me. Six seconds, dog? <laughs> you fell? I was fat, dog. Your boy was fat, though. Six, Six seconds, seconds, son. You I seen like pictures could... of me when I was fat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was fat. Yeah, you were I don't thick. think I've ever seen, I've never seen thick of cars. Oh, no, he was fat. Corn fat. Corn fat. Well, he's southern. Southern boy. Yeah, yeah. that's southern. Yo, Looking fat, mad though, get Mexican. Get <laughs> when he gets fat, he don't look Indian Yo, anymore. Yo, I'm telling you, real story, every day in middle school, my principal used to see me and go, hola, amigo. <laughs> you were like, I need to lose weight. <laughs> Yo, Mexicans for real see me be like, what's That's, up, Vato? Like, I don't even know what that means. Talk. You were just like, tacos? You guys, tacos? You guys going to get tacos? I'm sour get tacos. cream? Sour <laughs> cream? Sour cream? <laughs> I think I could hit under five. I think I could do an under five 40 yard dash. You probably could. But do I have to start from uh, one finger down? Well, what they do is like, they give you the, um, the you know, the blocks. Yeah. I don't need that. You do <laughs> I don't need blocks. I just start from like this. I'll just start from here. Uh, <laughs> if you got a running start, maybe. I don't what do you mean running start? You That's said you said under five or under four? Under five. five. Under four is under I four. Know I, I'm under that. four, I'd be in the NFL already. Yeah, I'd be in the say, Olympics. Like, nobody, be, I'd be in the Olympics. Be fucking Usain World Bolt, records. dog. Yeah. Wait, what do you think Usain Bolt could do? Usain Bolt runs like a four, probably like a four one or some some probably even faster than that. I bet his fastest is after forty yards. Yeah, because yeah. he's so he tall. Picks up t- he picks up speed and his fucking his, his length, limbs are right? Just so, yeah, because yeah, he's six so. five. It's probably harder yeah. when you're tall. Like, like, if you like, if you time him like twenty yards in, he'll probably get like a three nine. We got to do an Andrew <laughs> combine. That's what I'm saying. We should, we should all do it together. I honestly, I don't think I can lift two hundred twenty five pounds in bench press. Really? Yeah, definitely not. Do you think that would look? Do you think an NFL scout would, when they look at your combine workouts and they're like two twenty five? Kevin Durant couldn't do it. Two twenty five, zero reps. Kevin Durant's a fucking Kevin NBA. Durant they had him a shooting guard. But yeah. The Wait, hold on. He couldn't lift. Do you remember that? Shit? Like no, when, the, when they were like the the combine and who's coming into the yeah, league. Yeah, wasn't it like one eighty five for basketball? I don't I don't know. It's I don't I remember the exact number. Sure. Tyson Chandler couldn't do it either. But he couldn't get one one lift up on the bench press in the combine, and they were like, "Oh, we don't know if he's going to be able to take in the league." And that's why they took Greg. Well, that was part of why they took Greg Oden first because they didn't think his body was NBA ready. Hold on for that for that Kevin. Kevin who? Kevin Durant. The Kevin finals Durant. MVP. Oh, I thought NBA. Kevin Love. No, 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 no. Kevin oh, Durant. Kevin Durant, yeah, that makes yeah, sense because yeah. he's so slender. But yeah, it's like, no, who gives, it's the NBA. Yeah. Who gives a fuck what you Tyson, get bench for? Tyson Chandler <laughs> couldn't do it? Apparently, yeah, he couldn't do it either. Oh, my God. Yeah. He looks jacked. Yeah, yeah. but he got now, bigger. Now he's yeah. jacked. I mean, he... 
Him, when KD came to the league, they were all skin and bones, yeah. dude. All okay. skin and bones. But Jackson like, Chandler was 18, too. You know what I mean? True. He came out of true. high school. You look at uh, you look at fucking, like, Anthony Davis. Like, the, I don't know what... I mean, the NBA fucking... The NBA, like, whatever, like, weight program they're putting these so, dudes on. Like, steroids. You look at... Oh, God's yeah, gotta yeah. be steroids. Dude, like, you look at Giannis now, shit. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like you look at Giannis when he first came to the league, and look at him now, dude. Yeah. He looks like he took the fucking Captain America serum, dude. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> he was fucking yeah. skin and bones. Dude, he was now his shoulders nine like... points a game in Greece. Which steroid user has better teeth, Giannis or Floyd? <laughs> well, Floyd? Floyd's got the best teeth, but He's I would never say that he does it. Teeth. Canelo is yeah. gonna fuck up everything for me, dog. Yeah, the money's fucked up for Cinco de Mayo, dude. What the fuck, bro? That was my weekend. I was gonna go out and I was gonna do a. It still might happen, but a stand-up show that weekend as well. Oh, see, but I I don't know if I'm going to do the stand-up show uh, if there's not going to be the Canelo Triple G fight. Mm. Just keep putting out that Mexican clip. I'll just come to see you anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm good, my Mexican people. Oh no, yeah. dog. Um, my my I, the Canelo thing kind of sucks because it's like you know two drug tests, right? He failed. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's almost like it's almost like to me. And the way you explained it and the way I've been, like, reading it lately, like, it's almost like cycling, where it's like, everybody kind of does a little bit of steroids. Everybody gets steroids. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you're going to fuck up all this money for, for this? Or it's like, like I'm, not, I'm, not as, I'm not as tuned into the boxing world as you are, but it's like, is this just like Triple G's camp just being petty no. at this point? This or is, is like Canelo's a real camp thing? being very... Um, stupid? Yeah, stupid, but mm. also... Uh, but it careless mm. and, and clumsy. That's all it is. Because mm-hmm. you can do the steroids when you're not in a contract. Yeah. yeah. Just do them outside of the contract. <clears throat> or don't sign the contract mm. until, what are we in right now? April? Yeah. Well, it's almost March, almost, almost April, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just don't sign the contract until six weeks before the fight mm-hmm. and do steroids up to then. They well, it's, only it's, test you once you're contracted. <laughs> So he's being careless. His people are being careless. I think. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm. A, listen, I'm a steroid apologist, dog. I think steroids make spurts great. I haven't watched a full season of baseball since they took steroids out the game. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I think in fight sports, it's just a little different. You know, what I mean, like, I think I honestly think, and people might give me shit for this. Yeah, I think steroids is a victimless crime. It's like if you want to put some shit into your body that's gonna make you hit the ball farther or block a little harder or you know not get as injured as much or whatever, right. knock yourself out. But if you're taking steroids and you're gonna go fight a guy, you could probably kill him or it, kill yourself, especially and, if he's not allowed to take steroids. Yeah, that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, and my theory is every you're not going to be able to catch everybody doing it. The mm-hmm. great everybody's going to do it regardless. So just yeah. make it legal. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. stop it. I wouldn't make it legal. And like it's, it's it's like what's a what's a performance enhancing drug really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it like, make a difference, right? It makes a difference. I mean, I, I mean, I've never taken steroids. I heard before, it makes a so massive difference. I, I want to take HGH. Our comedian friend uh, Mike Cannon took clenbuterol and said he was fucking yoked. Really yoked in college? Yeah, when college he was or playing high ball? school. Yeah, he told he told me I'm not I'm gonna mess up the specifics, so I don't want to get yeah, too yeah. Mm-hmm. crazy into it. But he basically said it was incredibly effective. He, he was crazy for that time, mm-hmm. but. Uh, like it wasn't good for him, no. but he was. Yoked. But now they got it down. Got now it's so specific. No, he yeah. said he was cycling it like really well, like exactly how he was told to cycle it. But he still was uh, some crazy. I had a guy that it's had not, a guy you know, that there's I, risks. That, but, there's lots of risks. Yeah. I had I had a dude that I played uh, basketball with in college that was on some shit. I don't know exactly what he was on, but one year he was in fucking. He was he was like probably like you know regular size dude NBA yeah. not NBA yeah. but like good good. Basketball body, yeah, and then like he comes back his cute? senior year, was fucking yoked, fucking gorgeous white man, he was, he was gorgeous cute? white man. Right. <laughs> I, had, I had a white friend took steroids, so he wasn't that cute, but and then he had uh, fifteen all this pounds of muscle in one summer. Acne, dog, like oh, the yeah, acne yeah, yeah. was the dead giveaway. That I was like, he never really confirmed it, but he did say, "Oh, you know, I'm taking some different yada yada yada." Yeah, and like it wasn't no GNC. It wasn't that like you could take like over the counter, but like the acne was the dead giveaway that he was on some shit. Yeah, and it's like, you know it. I don't know, man. Like I, I, it's 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 a weird thing with me because I don't think it really gives you that much of a competitive advantage in like a sport like basketball, right? But it definitely makes you wonder, like, is the risk really worth the reward? I mean, it gives you an advantage. I think in pretty much everything. I think the advantage in basketball is recovery. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And I think with the schedule being so that these guys are playing back to backs, they're playing every other day. 
you know, your body needs to recover. Like we've, we've, you know, we've even spoken about on this show about the big injuries have happened after massive games. Yeah. You know, Boogie drops 41 next game. He plays, he pulls, tears the ACL. Mm. A few other people, I forget who, but just massive games playing the next day and mm. then boom. So, you know, maybe an HGH cycle is good for it. I bumped into a guy when I was in Columbus and he was talking to me about um, HGH cycles and he was like, it's too expensive. Or I would absolutely do it. He goes, my hair, he goes, my hair was thicker. I, my recovery was 10 times uh, better. I was stronger. And he said it was like $400 every two weeks or something like that. I just think it just has bad PR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if HGH H- has There's much- not a ton of info out on HGH because it's relatively yeah. new. Yeah. But I think in 15, 20 years, we might be like, you know what? Bro, yeah. we've been doing 40 Cause years. Because we could decide to how big our fucking kids are if we wanted to. Yeah. Like I, there was this girl um, that I looked at, well- there was this girl that I knew, and, and uh, she that was real. That was real smooth. That was How real smooth. Her? Keep it pushing. How you know her? <laughs> you think if Cass told the story, you would let him slide? Mm. There was this mm. girl. <laughs> there was this sweet little girl, right? And how uh, little was she? <laughs> little born, enough that you can't. Born in the eighties. Uh, born little. in the eighties. Okay. Right. No, so mm. uh, but she um, and she said that uh, she was like really small as a kid, really small, and her doctor told her. And asked her and her parents, how tall do you want to be? Wow. And she just said an arbitrary number. She was like, I'll be uh, five, four. And she's five, three and a half. Mm. Like wow. they gave her the right amount of steroids and HGH. <laughs> I had another friend who was basically a midget in middle mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. And he ended up being like an average size dude because they started pumping him full of uh, HGH. You know, Sam Roberts. Yeah. yeah Sam, Sam Roberts, Roberts also, yeah. he took a uh, HGH. Really? Yeah. Like mm. he was going to be really small. He was mm. going to be like, unfortunately small. Mm. So they put him on an HGH cycle as a kid. All I'm saying is small height is curable. Yes. Like just as like getting your, being bald is yeah. curable. Yeah, yeah, small, yeah. being small is, it is, we are allowing people to be small. We just need well, better. It just needs, it just no, needs- for real. Like <laughs> think about it. Like what if you, what if let's say your kid, right? Your mm. kid, your, your, your girls, your girl's pretty short. That's a, right? that's you're, a, that's a, you're that's short. A, yeah. You have the opportunity to have a six foot kid. Yeah. Would you not take that? I feel like this is going to happen. I don't know, man. That's like. You know a, I mean, I just feel like that's my kid is gonna be six feet. This is what it is. Yeah, you're right. I you know, so. I would definitely get a, a a test on that kid to make sure it's yours. <laughs> I'm gonna come out with a six five kid. Some kid. Yeah. Sim- my brother's almost. My brother's five eleven. Uh-huh. Yeah. I feel like it could happen. We got some tall genes in there. If you have a kid and he comes out six five, I'm like, uh, six five is you know. Congrats, but, mm. okay. But what if as a as a prepubescent teen, mm. he's very or she is very small. I don't know. It's a, it's a it's an irrational fear I have. I, honestly, like I don't like. I not that I, would, I don't want short kids, but like, you know, like I want you know I want my kids to be tall. Why like, wouldn't I want you want your be, kid you know, to be tall? Why wouldn't I you want, want them to have get, a good I, opportunity to get laid? As a good parent, you want your parent. You want your kids to have every advantage absolutely in life that they can possibly have, and if we can provide be, that. And now. you can provide that, dog. Like it's it's scientifically proven that people of a certain height, you know, what I mean, like whether they're playing a sport. Or whether it's just like going Life out for is a easier. job interview, like it's easier. Their, their posture is better. They yeah. command a certain whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I could control that. Like, if I could control that, my kid's gonna be like my height or taller. I would like that. So, how know? fucked up is this? If you're five six, the doctor won't say anything. <laughs> if you're five two, the doctor will say, like, "Hey, how tall do you want to be?" And then you can end up being five eight. Now you're two inches taller than the five six mm. guy. How unfair is that to the five six guy? I mean, he didn't know it had the, the HGH had bad PR, man. All he needs to do is he needs to walk up to the doctor, be like, "Hey, I'm five six, but I heard you know, yo, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, slide this under the table. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it'd be nice to be like six one. It'd be nice to be five eleven, five ten. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, now as a guy who's six two, I think this is horrible. <laughs> Why? I don't want any competition for my kids. <laughs> I make my kids six two, and then every kid six two. But my kids are basically five eight. And you like tall girls too, so you're gonna have a tall ass kid. So I'd be looking at that shit with girls. Oh man. no, for sure. Like, I love I'm tall all women. about breeding out here. I love tall women. Like I, absolutely. Yeah. But for that reason, I'm like, what can we make? <laughs> what can we put together? Like I'm looking at her hand size. For like sure. I don't want her hands too big that my dick looks small, yeah. but I don't want them too small <laughs> that my kid can't palm a basketball. So right. I gotta find the perfect the perfect balance. I of, want them uh, to be legs, and I want them to be limbs, and I want sick. them to come out and just be like, listen, 
College is pretty much paid for, dog. That's it. Like, you don't That's even it. Play, get that, play get that volleyball, scholarship. play basketball. I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, just, I'm six, 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 seven. Someone will throw you some money for college. Facts. You know? You get so. one of those bullshit, uh, what is it called? Uh, smart scholarships? Yeah. Uh, smart scholarship. What is it called? An academic scholarship? A- academic, yeah. <laughs> I don't know those words. Don't, don't fucking word shame me again. Academic is not a fucking big <laughs> word. All right? Smart scholarship. <laughs> so, uh, you know where you were going. What those I, smart- I was so dumbed down. I was like, Bro, what the fuck is he talking I'm off about? coffee. I stopped drinking coffee. So, uh, uh, you drinking you need to get back co- on coffee, That was dude. decaf. Oh. Ah, that was yeah. decaf. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's me. Oh, man. I've been drinking fucking green juice for the past three weeks. I'm why? Trying to- L.A.? One year, oh, I'm trying to slim it down. That's why he's single. Oh, I'm just trying to stay healthier. You're trying man. to drop yeah, dick off, huh? That's what white bitches. Try to, yeah, <laughs> that's a, I, I, I told you you out there fucking white bitches, bro. <laughs> told you you out no, there I'm, fucking I white like, bitches. I like make my own shit now too. Like it's 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 a good thing to drink after workout. I mean, it's so single. Nutrients back and I'm just trying to get my temples in order. You know what I mean? Just trying to get my mind, my body, and my soul. My right? chakras. You know what I mean? I just, just, you know, I just feel like it's really time to focus on myself. You know what I mean? I've been drinking a lot of juices. I'm cooking. Yeah, man. You know, I'm cleaning up my house more often. Started now. wearing less and going out more. <laughs> <laughs> Glasses of champagne on the dance floor, dog. Oh man. <laughs> Ever since the so the Warriors, dude. Uh, they look pretty vulnerable to me. Yo, bronze year, man. It's bronze year. Is it bronze? I'm year? so bronze excited year. about this Warriors injuries. It's bronze year. <sighs> the Warriors I, can't keep it together, man. I don't know. I think. Uh, well, okay, first of all, I think we're overlooking the Rockets completely. I don't know if they would be able to do it in the finals, but I don't, uh, I don't think. Also, Steph Curry's out for one round of the playoffs. Does that matter? I think it does. Here's. I don't know if I it matters. It does, dude. Why do you think it does? Because there is absolutely nobody talking about how good the Utah Jazz are. They are very fucking good. They're not bad. If they were in the Eastern Conference, they would be the talk of the league. They would be like a top two, top three seed. And they have a di- like Donovan Mitchell's fucking dynamite. Like yeah. he's that that motherfucker is he's he's who I thought Dennis Smith Jr. was gonna be. I yeah. Know, you know what I mean? Shame. Like he's he's a beast. Like is Dennis, Dennis Smith Jr. faded. No, I mean he's good, he's but he's good. just he's, you know, not, he's, he's not playing as well as Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, Don, who, exactly. Who is though? But is he yeah. playing better than Frank Nikoliki? Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. But um, you know, like we all, everybody, nobody saw Donovan Mitchell coming. Then you got yeah. Rudy Gobert, who's probably going to be Defensive Player of the Year. You got um, he's so weird that guy. He is really fucking just weird, the way man. he walks is weird. Can you imagine if Hayward yeah. stayed there and didn't get hurt, dude, bro. Dude. That team is making noise, man. I don't know, wow. man. The team is making noise. Wait, did uh, healthy and Gordon Ka- Hayward? And I'm, I, I'm, I don't Ricky know. Rubio, dude, Rubio's great. Rubio's a and underrated all he wants defender. To do, he's a passer. He's a great defender. Mm. And I'm phenomenal s- passer. Skipping to another injury, but if if Kyrie's knee doesn't, if Kyrie stays getting hurt, because remember mm-hmm. Kyrie early yeah. part of his career was always hurt. Yeah, and he was healthy for two seasons. We all forgot he was ever hurt. Yeah, yeah. Bron got. Back Someone and... tweeted he his knees were made out of cornflakes, and I never forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> And, he's made uh, out of churros and shit. Yeah, and now his knee is crunch, crunch. Yeah. yeah. You think you think Gordon Hayward is looking like uh, like you dumped your girl and she got hot and you're like, oh, fuck. Fuck, man. And you Maybe. were the shit in Utah. Yeah. yeah. Like, you were like, you were the next big fucking, you know. Forget that, being the white star yeah, that's on what I'm saying. Utah Jazz team. Oh, my God. I'm like, and don't think the irony isn't lost at me on him going to Boston. He thought it was going to be like, this is just going to be like Utah, but better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's not, bro. It's big market Utah. Yeah, it's big Boston. market Utah. Yeah. That's all it is. And it's like, nah, Gordon. But I guarantee really you, not. Utah got hotter women. Really? Yeah, but they just some hot I don't know, Christian a lot of Mormons. Yeah. But, they're, but they're Mormon. They're There's like a lot religious, of hot religious girls out there. Uh, yeah. Well, any place has hotter girls than Boston. Boston is the other thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, you know, oof. God. Uh, bad. Uh, oof. Yeah. Much of um, nest monsters. Right okay, there, so we have we have this situation where nobody's taking the Utah Jazz seriously. Let's mm. assume the Utah Jazz don't beat the Warriors okay. in the first round, which they I think are. is fair. I don't think which is a fair assessment. You still that being KD's said, record. you have a couple things going on here. Yeah. You have a Clay Thompson who hasn't played in a couple weeks, mm-hmm. who's just getting back in the swing of things. His thumb is, you know, maybe a little sore. Mm-hmm. It's easy to re-injure a thumb. Yeah, I jammed my thumb and I played a game of basketball. And that's Someone a shooting hits hand it. too. It was it right it was or left? Hand. It was a shooting hand. Yeah, shooting yeah, hand yeah. is massive. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All the muscles are tired. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everything fucks up. Muscle memory and all that shit. All that shit. Um, now you have Steph who is been very injury prone this year mm-hmm. i'm not even talking about the knee let's say the knee comes the back the ankles are still weak yeah the ankles are weak and, and when you have weak ankles they keep getting injured and not even and that dude. like 
And what? Andrew knows. Yeah. I know my my ankle. It took me two years to come back from ankle injury. Yeah, because it's like it's like the whole scale theory. It's like once you're overcompensating for one thing, yeah, the other one gets you. Yeah. And on top of that, like you know, Paul Pierce said something really interesting on the on the ESPN today. He was like, "Yo, no matter how much you try to downplay a knee injury, there's no such thing as a minor knee injury." You know Facts. what I mean? Especially when you're playing high level playoff basketball, and they know. Your shit is They're going at you. They know you got a target. Yeah. You don't think there's not you don't think there's there's Zaza's karma like flying over that saying, warriors? That's what I was just about to say. It's like, I shouldn't be like I'm like low key happy about this injury. <laughs> and what would really make me feel like I believe in justice. And what would make me feel like justice happened is if he comes back in the playoffs, game one, somebody just slides his foot under Steph, yeah. Steph lands on it and is out for the playoffs, yeah. and they lose because of it. Yeah, and you think anybody? And they would. You don't, I don't think, think there's they somebody make it through the playoffs without fuck? Steph? Yeah, you don't think somebody gives a fuck about being labeled dirty if it means you could Zaza didn't the war? Yeah, you give a fuck. And then dude. we all just forgot. So yeah. I was talking to you guys about this earlier, but I want to share with the flagrant two folks. Um, I cannot wait for an NBA that doesn't have these useless bigs, the Zaza Pachulias, <laughs> the JaVale McGee's, these guys yeah. who are just big and athletic but have zero skill. Mm. I, I want an NBA that is all not all skilled bigs. I like our small players. I like the Stephs. I like yeah. the Kyries. They're much more relatable. They're way more fun to watch. I yeah. mean, Kevin Durant is the hardest guard in the league, but he's not fun to watch. Yeah. It just looks too easy. It yeah. doesn't look like a single shot has any pressure on it or anything like that. Whereas you see Kyrie score and you're like, how the fuck did he score? Mm-hmm. Hey, maybe it's just nostalgia, but I also like the Andre Drummonds. I like this the Skilled big who's skilled in the post. Oh, yeah. bangs. sure, yeah. sure. I, I'm I'm cool with that too. Yeah, I like yeah. a guy who's got post moves. That kind of stuff is great. I mean, I even like the guy who's on San Antonio. What's his name? Um, oh, you Aldridge. 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 Yeah, I like Aldridge. Yeah, like yeah. a skilled big. Yeah, not these goofy fucking these bumbling big, clunky, idiots. Clumsy. These clunky Star Wars camel There's, looking yeah. motherfuckers <laughs> that just There's falling all over the place. Generation of seven footers who literally got in the NBA because they're big. Because they're seven foot, and yeah, they I mean, learned. It's like they, they didn't find the game; the game found them. Yeah, and it's obvious when you see them play. And yes, they have the athleticism to compete in the league at seven feet, yeah. but they're really just in the way. They get the ball; they're a liability. Yeah. It's no fun. Like you were saying. Uh, earlier, it's better to have a bunch of cats. Yeah. If we have I a bunch like, of Carl Anthony Towns, a bunch of Jonas is a different animal, yeah. but a traditional big, even yeah. Kevin Loves or uh, wh- who's another, I mean, obviously Joel Embiid's like mm-hmm. these skilled bigs that can play four or five. To a degree. Ben Simmons ben is 6'10". Of dude. course, yeah, skilled yeah. Big, bigs that can play four and five yeah. that aren't going to be falling on your best player yeah. and tearing his fucking meniscus two weeks before the playoffs. Yeah. And Wasn't kinda- Zaza that fell on Steph? Uh, no, JaVale. It was, it was McGee. JaVale. McGee. JaVale yeah, McGee. And look, still JaVale's kind of likable, himself, but, but he's a clumsy motherfucker. Yeah. He hasn't really developed a game. You have nothing to do in the offseason but develop around a game. the rim. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you can, it's not like you can't put in that time. No. And well, you know, I'm sorry. When does this injury just happen, right? In the yeah. last few days? Uh, a couple do you of think, years. You think uh, Shaq is going to bring this up on Shaq and a fool or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, him and JaVale have had beef for like a number of years. I mean, Maybe like it'll probably like if Javale. Who the fuck is Javale ja- McGee to go JaVale back? Javale really, yeah, like he really had an issue with that. Like I thought. They I were mean, I guess you gotta, more. but also you're not. It's that Shaq, man. Yeah. Just take your licks. Yeah, to write a passage, dog. It's, a it's like being on. It's like being on fucking America's Funniest Home Video. How did he go back and check? I, I don't know how he went back at him. He, he was actually out. offended. I, I don't know. He's basically like, yo, you corn or some shit. Yeah, he said some like it went. He went like unnecessarily hard. Like you know when you're like joking around with somebody and then they're like, well, you know. That's why your mom sucked dick. And I was like, like whoa. whoa. Like, who the fuck is even talking about tweets. all that? I'm, I'm going to look up the tweets. Man, I forgot what he said, but he went like unnecessarily hard. Like, you could go back and goof. Like, if you're goofing on me, yeah. I'll goof on you. Don't make it seem like, okay, like, if you're goofing on me, don't be like, oh, you're, you're a disgrace to black a, people. Like, a, what? Yeah, that's, Come that's on, a lot. Dog. That's an extra. Relax. That's relax. extra. But has he talked about him since? Maybe that shit works. I don't know. It was like, a, well, probably, yeah. Damn, I, think, I think, like, his Found mom, Shaq's like, stepped tonight. in or something yeah, like that. His mom got involved. Shaq's yeah. mom was like, that's enough. Man. Yeah. He's going too far. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Shaq's yeah. mom, like, cracked the whip. Was like, leave that poor boy alone in the wrestling <laughs> answer to, to Mama Shaq. Which is the most badass shit ever because it's like how mu- how much more of a badass you need to feel when he tells Shaq like hey calm the fuck down. Wait, <laughs> she told her own son. To yeah, yeah. she's like he made him go apologize and he did or something along that really? might be wrong, but like some, his mom his mom got involved in some way shape or form and that squashed it. Mm-hmm. So All right. um, I don't know. I like to, to your earlier point about um, you know the league. I think we're like 15, 20 years away from like. An all unicorn squad, like I feel like I feel like the Bucks tried that. I think Jason yeah, Kidd tried that. Okay. 
He tried like putting Giannis at point guard and yeah. then, like Thon Maker and like yeah. just all just arms and legs like Greg yep. Monroe, Jabari Parker, all these like six ten do everything guys. And I feel like we're like fifteen, maybe ten years away from like you could roll out an NBA team of like all seven footers. Of all Anthony Davis, wow. <laughs> it's just like all right. your point guard. Seven, oh, read Here's the, the read tweets. At Shaq first, she goes at Shaq. Get my nuts out of your mouth. He's Damn the peanut emoji and EAD, E-A-D eat a dick. Hashtag that is all. Shaq, at JaVale McGee. Now since you're on a good team, you want to act like you a player now. Stop it. You will only be remembered for Shaq and a fool. Hashtag bum ass. At JaVale McGee again. Don't be acting like you a G. I'll smack the shit out of your bum ass. <laughs> you the one to be looking stupid with your dumb ass. Hashtag Spicy! bum ass. JaVale. Oh, we threatening people now? Kick rocks, you old bastard. You ain't going to do shit. And that's how my mama stick to Coonan. Oh, yeah. That was the one. And, that, that and was then the there one was a couple more. But that's where yeah. I think it really got yeah. like, here we go. You can't so talk Shaq about threatened cool, physical man. violence. Yeah, I mean, what, it says Shaq. Of course he's going to threaten physical violence. That's all Shaq do. Yo, go win a ring or I'll beat you up. Those are the two he go. He knows. Shaq's he is one, the total big guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just no. But like you have to though. Like when you're that big because it's like, who's going to really test you? And it's like, you can't, you know. I would probably do that. I'd probably be like, do you forget who the fuck you're talking to? Yeah, yeah. 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 But like, it's, it's always going to come a point where there's going to be a guy just as big as you who's like, yeah, I know who the fuck I'm talking to. Yeah, Square this, up. This humor shit is really for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> like, we just developed it because we're pussies, right? We're just trying yeah. to not fight I these tell you, big I guys. I tell you, that's exactly why I developed it. Yeah. yeah. I can't fight, so here's what I'll do. Because if we could I'll knock someone laugh. out, no problem. I wouldn't say a word yeah, ever. Yeah, there'd be no, like, I'm I not going to call you something funny. That's yeah. why yeah. I fucking, like, if you ever met, like, a UFC fighter or a boxer, yeah. they're the most calm, cool, collected motherfuckers on yeah. earth. Yeah, yeah. Nothing gets them rattled. They could, You could make fun of them until the live long day. Yeah, yeah. Because they know in the back of your mind, I could whip 90% out. of the world yeah. to ass. It's also why most of them are not funny. Yeah, like, yeah. they've never had to be. As great Floyd is uh-huh. at, uh, at, at boxing, he is not great at all at being nah. funny. Conor McGregor's kind of funny, but he's only funny because he's offensive. <laughs> yeah, no, he is genuinely Those are the funny. outliers. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're the no, but like, I, the but like offensive. They're, like, they're the Anthony offensive. Davises of the world. Like, <laughs> yeah. like a skilled big, like, yeah. like you're big, but you've developed all you these really other skills. About the he's game. a unicorn, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, he's the fighter unicorn. He's like, yeah. what the fuck is that? Yeah. What are you wearing? Yeah. Like, Connor is genuinely funny. Yeah, he but genuinely that's our funny. type of humor. Like, yeah. we like offensive shit. Like, tell him he can't fucking read and just yeah. like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, you know what I yeah, I fucked with Conor McGregor on that level, but um, back to like McGee, man. Like he ain't fighting again. He ain't fighting nobody. Though. Nobody in the NBA is fighting. Maybe it's a good segue to. Uh, mm. No, I wasn't saying McGee. I was saying Conor McGregor. But that is a good segue. That is a great segue. Ah, segues. All right. uh, I like, I like, I like the that, flow of this take show. It to the next level. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we have a new segment on this show called the non-smoking section. Mm-hmm. And the non-smoking section is for fake fights, mm-hmm. almost it's, altercations. It's for people who don't want no smoke. Yeah. For people who don't want no smoke. And I feel like we got to we gotta address the elephant in the room that I nobody we do. Talk to us. Talk to us, Cass. really admit. And I didn't even want to admit it because I'm a stan of this player. Yeah, same. Like, he is one of my favorite this players. Hurts. If I start an NBA team, I'm like, if you give me this guy and four other guys, I will make it work. We have to stop pretending that Russell Westbrook is with the smoke because he clearly is not. Yeah, he Not-smoking clearly is section. not. Dog, like, non-smoking section this week is dedicated to Russell Westbrook, guys. He'll shove you. He'll make mean faces. Mm-hmm. He'll growl and all this other stuff and yada yada yada. But at the end of the day, he been... wants to fight you as much as his outfits do. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's he's. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's the NBA. Nobody's really going to fight. But it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, no, you don't need to be tough. You don't need to be tough. You can play tough. Yeah. You can have a toughness about you, but you don't need to carry this like, you know, like if somebody has the ball and you're swiping at him and you're in their face, like you're going to punch. Like, you're not really going to punch him. Stop it. Like, you don't need to really. Like, you ran up to somebody. I forgot who ran up to him. I think I think it was Evan Evan Turner. Turner. Like, I think Evan Turner ran up but to Evan and didn't gave want him, to smoke either. If you watched the he video. didn't. No, but he no. gave him a shove that was a smoke inviter. It was a light shove. No, nah, because it was it came from like it came from like three quarters court. Like it was like a scrum. I watched it's a scrum it back. having a I, at first watch it looked like that, and then I watched it back and it was a little bit more even. I don't know. I feel like if somebody gets a running start and yeah. shoves me, yeah. a fist gotta be thrown. 
Yeah. And any other place but the NBA. These motherfuckers don't want to lose no money, bro. Yeah, that's all it no is. Money. He they wants wanna... to buy ripped jeans. If he has to pay a $50,000 fine, that's like four pairs of ripped jeans yeah, that he can't those, buy. Those, sorry, those are Ferragamos he can't buy. Yeah. Exactly. He's gonna, <laughs> he can't try to those buy. are Valentinos he can't buy tomorrow, dude. <laughs> three blouses he's not going to be able to add to his wardrobe. Four fedoras, you know, some stupid ripped shirt. Oh, man, that's rough for He him, cares man. about them clothes, man. He's not yeah. trying to pay those fines. Yeah. And I get it, but I think that I think a better thing to but this do, isn't the first time, right? Like no, they, this is gone to a all lot. them. Lonzo called it out the best. And yeah, like why didn't you go defend? He goes because the NBA nobody fights, and yeah. people gave him shit as if he wasn't defending his teammate. But why waste your fucking time? You know they're they not gave him fight. shit for like. Eight hours max. Yo, here's and the, then they were like, well, he's he's the he's point. Gonna, <laughs> but here's the reality about it. Uh, here's the reality about the league. If somebody fouls you or does something that you don't like, mm. I think a better way to handle it that showcases your toughness is a hard foul next time they come down yeah. the floor. A hard pick, drop them on the pick, lower That's how shoulder. It used to be. That's how it used to be. That's what it used to be. Because what you do, what you're acknowledging, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're acknowledging, hey, I know none of us are going to fight. But I also want to let you know mm -hmm. that that slick shit ain't going to fly with me. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. catch you coming and back. And I think that that's, that's actually better in terms of the message it sends to the player you're playing against. Mm -hmm. Because then he goes, oh shit, I could get hurt if I go down the lane. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I might think twice about, yeah. one, fouling him hard again. But two, even going down. Charles Oakley made a living on that shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come down here, try to get some buckets. Yeah. Try think, to get some easy buckets. Do you think that's not happening as much because flagrants are getting called so much more? I think that's a big part of it, but at the same time, there's people that you sign specifically for that. Enforcers. That's true. You got to get your enforcers. But, and not to just carve on the name of the podcast, but a flagrant two is not what a flagrant two used to be. No. That shit used to be crazy. No, there's videos of dudes punching each other in the face and they were like, yo, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> chill, 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 chill. Stop punching him in the face. Yo, stop punching <laughs> him in the face, please. Those fucking, uh, God, what did Ron Artest do to James Harden? When he, when I guess he dunked on him and he fucking... Son, elbowed him in the elbow. What do you like, get? What do you get for that? I think. He got, I mean, and this isn't like this isn't like too far away from like you know the real flavor. This is like a little bit after the yeah. malice and all yeah. that type of shit. But you know, Ron, what well, Meta World Peace was still had his, uh, you know, his reputation. So yeah. like that yeah. happened. He got suspended. All and he tried shit. to act like he was beating his chest. But anybody, yeah, yeah he was so trying funny. to do like he was yeah. beating his chest. Elbowed the fuck out of this dude. And he was like, uh, he did that shit on like a uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like a nationally televised game. It was like a Sunday uh, afternoon. Uh, Everybody so saw that shit. Yeah. So it's like if you. Uh, <sighs> If anybody else did that, it would be like, you know, flagrant two. You probably get thrown out the game. You get mm -hmm. fined a little bit, and then that's it. But he had a, rep a reputation preceded him, understood. Well, so uh, Akash's point is kind of interesting. The reason we got more fake fights is because you can't hard foul. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's now you're really costing yeah. your team. Or is it's this the NBA's. And yeah. then you're going to have your announcers and like, well, that's how you stand up for your team. Yeah. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Like, you just want to save dude. face and you're bullshit. scared to hard foul because yeah. you'll get kicked out the game. You'll get fined, etc. The NBA has, by accident, mm -hmm. created a policy that rewards almost fights. Yeah. There are more not, that rewards uh, non-smoking sections. I blame the refs. I blame the refs. I blame the referees. So you would rather them you would rather them allow some hard fouls. Let them have. Let them let them get any hard foul. I think only the only time a flagrant should be called yeah. is if somebody's in the air and defenseless. Like like a like a wide receiver like defenseless. In the air and defenseless is different. Or blindsiding on the pick is also. I mean, I get no, it. No, I think pick, I think a good blindside. Fuck somebody up. I think a it's good so blindside pick it's is that is that yeah. that's exactly that's like how some you get CTE somebody. Shit, bro, it's like a crash test dummy, <laughs> bro. Right? That's the best kind of receipt, dude. Yeah. Like that's the best kind of receipt. Like if you if, if somebody's in the air and you fucking toss them out the air, flagrant, throw them out the game i get yeah. that that's that's shitty basketball yeah but if you get called on a blindside pick that's your teammate's fault your Fair teammate's enough. supposed to be like yo screen left screen left Fair screen enough. left yeah. that's not if even you're a foul. running yeah, and it's not a foul right. that's a, a good one play or two. it's a yeah. good play yeah. so you get walloped you know what yeah. i mean like dude you deserve that and i feel better and that's how you defend your teammate and it's like you know what next time down Bring him, bring him across. I'll, I'll give him a good hard one, dude. And even if you throw a little shoulder into it, like they're not gonna call flagrant two on that. But if you're running into it, you know, like get get your money's worth, dude. Like if you know this is my receipt from a couple plays ago, and you call flagrant one on it, and they and I could front like, hey, I'm trying to set a screen or whatever. I could front and be like, hey, bro, I'm just. I could do the Zaza Patchouli. Like, oh, what do you mean? I my play screen. I play. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he gotta go. That guy, man. He's a ugh, man. And it's like it, it would be it would be. 
it would be more forgivable if he was good. Like Draymond has is. done, Draymond has done way more flagrant shit than he has. It's the Joe Namath thing, Dr- it's the same shit, the <laughs> exactly. partying type thing. Bro. You win, cool. Yeah. It's your wins, bro. Draymond is motherfucking fuck. invaluable to that Warriors team. If he wants to kick a few people in the nuts, so look, Zaza might have won them a championship <laughs> though. Yeah. I mean, I realistically, I don't think they lose that series, but that game one, Kawhi oh, was destroying, destroying everything. Destroying them. They were up 20, and it was all Kawhi. In Oakland. In Oakland. <laughs> In Oakland. Yeah. Now, they had their long-ass layoff, and sometimes it fucks up the one seed, but, like, Dog. Kawhi was locking down KD, yeah. scoring at will, Man. hitting jumpers. It was crazy. Yeah. And he hasn't been the same since. It's that really sad. just fucked up. You think that they, they, uh, they did a shitty surgery on his thigh on purpose? <laughs> I to what? Not. Try to, to try to resign him. To try to keep him in San Antonio. Well, you got this, you got this uh, thing about teams being willing to sacrifice everything for one contract that I don't understand. Yeah, I just believe it. I believe in that corporate espionage shit. Yeah, I get it. But like, you're not realistically giving up one championship to save. 60, 70 million dollars because the amount of money that's worth is not worth Wait, saving. What do you mean by that? Like, so let's say he signs a $120 million deal instead of a $200 million deal, which isn't yeah. even, he's not going to take that much less money. Yeah. I don't, I think someone's going to offer, but you're not, the 80 million or whatever you give up, you would more than make up for that if your team won the championship. And this is a team that with Kawhi, I mean, they might be able to win a championship. But what if they felt he was gone anyway? And the only way that they could keep him, I mean, this is some real nefarious shit, but the only way they could keep him, they kind of fuck his What evidence did they bit. have that he was, the whole, all the tension is because of the treatment. Kawhi doesn't think they treated him right. Right. So before the injury, there was no tension. Yo, Pop has been super quiet about this. I don't get it. Pop is always like that, man. Pop no, has been, not. Pop kept the same energy. Pop didn't talk no, he about, doesn't, Pop never talked never, about social justice once until I'm this year. I'm telling you, Pop would talk about shit. I remember Pop, uh, Saying some shit at a press conference like 15 years ago, somebody was like, he just like squeezed it into something. Somebody's like, how how tough is this loss for you? And he's like, I mean, we're not at war. We're not like the soldiers out there, the real heroes, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Now he might have been deflecting, but like he he he'll drag shit in. It's not Pop will stand up for his players always. He's quiet, B. He hasn't said shit about Kawhi. I think Pop is- I think Pop is under the impression that Kawhi is faking it. I don't think I don't think Pop believes that Kawhi's crazy. injured. This is as crazy as you play an offensive line. I just don't think he believes he's injured. I think he feels that his thigh might hurt a little bit, but enough to play. And I think uh, Pop, but Pop is, is d- historically super cautious with his players. He held Kawhi out of the whole series last year. Yep. He held Duncan out, you know, ten years ago with an ankle injury. Yep. He don't give a fuck. Long term, he cares about his players. That's why I don't think it's phony when he speaks on social issues. Yeah, this but guy why isn't cares he talking, about his players. Why isn't he talking about? That's why. That's why I feel like he's so quiet about Kawhi. Well, he because I think he's just like he has no problem protecting his players. He has no problem saying I'm going to sit Tony Parker and I'm going to sit Tim Duncan. And I'm going to sit Ginobili back to backs. I'm not going to do this. And yet he's completely quiet about Kawhi. So something's off there. I think, my personal opinion, he doesn't believe that Kawhi's injured. I don't mm. think he buys the injury, and I think that he's asked his staff about it, and his staff was like, "Dog, his thigh is good. He just doesn't want to play." Man, we saw this, and it was a long. It was four or five months ago, but the motherfucker limped onto the plane. Yeah, you remember that video? You're the one that told us about that yeah, video. Yeah, I can limp on a plane, <laughs> Bruh. That's that was something mm-hmm. is off here. I think I, there's something. There's tension. Off Maybe here, he doesn't want to bring up the tension, but he also will. Just he said, like I've never seen anything like this Kawhi injury. Maybe I've Nike never got in Kawhi's head, yo, or maybe Jordan got in Kawhi's head, and Jordan's like, "Listen, Kawhi, if you want to be the player that I know you can be, mm. you got to go to a different." That's market. crazy because Duncan was that. Can I finish the idea? Mm. The Duncan never sold sneakers. Duncan mm. was so bad at selling sneakers, Nike let him go and be with Adidas. And he got fire kicks too. They gave him phone positive. They gave him hot shit. shit <laughs> he but he wouldn't fire. sell the sneakers. And Ooh. the reality is, San Antonio, you're not going to be a star. San Antonio's the star. San Antonio is almost like a football team. You're playing for the badge, which yeah. is great. And they can be effective with these Euros. They can be effective with these like pseudo star players that aren't really stars. You're not mm-hmm. really sure what the fuck they are. But in terms of you being an absolute superstar, maybe there's some Kyrie Irving in him. I don't maybe know. maybe he realizes if I want to do it and experience this at the highest level, I have one chance in my life to do this. I have one chance in my life to be a legit superstar in this league. I got to go to a big market. You think the guy who drives the '95 Tahoe <laughs> cares about the glitz and glamour of being a superstar? You know, I'm, I'm, I don't know I if was still drive you. a Tahoe, yo. I'm with you on that, but like this year, like in the beginning of this year, like. 
Kawhi did like some Foot Locker commercials that made him like that was playing into the fact that like oh he doesn't really have a personality but like when you don't see him he's doing all this wild shit yep. then like he had this Jordan thing come out so it's like it's very non Spursy you know what I'm saying and I think I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it's a Kawhi thing I think this really might be the first time Greg Popovich has had to deal with a like generational gap with him and a player. He's like the last of the Mohicans with the NBA teams. Like right. he's the longest, by far the longest tenured coach in the NBA. Right. And he's never had to deal with another star outside of Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manny Ginobili since the fucking nineties. And since Tony and Manny don't count because they're Euros. Yeah. From my understanding, and this oh, well, is Manny was from Argentina, but they don't have American ego. They'll just, mm. they're down to, with that socialism shit. Like play for the team, give it yeah. up for the team. Man who came off the bench for his whole career. We're talking about one of the best two guards in the history of the game. Yeah. When Man who was at his best. Oh, he's incredible. He was yeah. one of the best of the history of the game. Yeah. He came off the bench for his whole career. Now, did he add a bunch of years to it? He had some rings, possibly. But he was willing to give that up. American ego is not. Mm. American ego is different. We are individualistic in this country. I'm not- We're out here for hours. And I think when, Kai, uh, when Kawhi has a conversation with Jordan Brandt, and they say to him, we want to give you your own sneaker. Mm. But we know that San Antonio doesn't sell sneakers. Mm-hmm. We did it with Tim Duncan. He was arguably the best player in the NBA, and he couldn't sell a fucking thing. Well, we he's won't. a big man, he's also too. Big. Big, Kevin Garnett big, sell big guys don't really that's sell fair. sneakers that's like fair. that either. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can think of a big man that did sell some sneakers. I would Maybe. say two things to this. One, there was, a, there was an article I talked about, I think, a week or two ago, where Greg Popovich has, like, a way of choosing players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of them is, like, essentially he looks for a mentality more so than a specific skill to fit mm-hmm. a system. And one of the things is like, you're not above the team. You got to be willing to laugh at yourself. So he picked Kawhi based on this criteria. If Kawhi changed, cool. But I also heard the year Kawhi won finals MVP, I think. I was talking to a guy who knew uh, like Kawhi's college coach or something. Mm-hmm. And he said, this guy is it's unlike anything I've ever seen. All he cares about is basketball. He lives with his mom. She cooks all his meals. He doesn't drink. He doesn't go out. All he wants to do is be better at basketball. Yeah. So that, unless he's changed, what I think we're kind of seeing is a Derrick Rose thing where you're injured and you're hurt yeah. and maybe you start to get in a dark place because all of a sudden this thing is taken from you. You start blaming other yeah. people. That's what I worry about. Yeah, I, do, I definitely do think that plays into it too. Like it kind of feels like with Kawhi, you know, when we saw him, this year, you know, there was a couple of games he played. He looked like, you know, he kicked the Knicks ass, but that's that's not saying right. much. But like he looked, he looked sort of good. But injuries are so much more mental than it is physical. And when you're a guy that good, and you and went athletic. from an athletic, and you go from you know being maybe a top five, top three player in the NBA to I have to limp on this plane to I don't even trust your doctors that are taking care of me. Yeah. That's going to fuck up your mental, man. Yeah. So it's Why like I don't the really doctors think doctors not take care of him. Can somebody explain not, that? Not not just take care of him. They did a but bad job. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he thinks they meant to. But they have to know that their career is riding on his thigh. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, mean it doesn't mean they do can't the fuck best. up or misdiagnose. Okay, like so. Isaiah Thomas, dude, they misdiagnosed the fuck out of him. Really? And you know, now and he's still kind of like he's now just starting to get a little bit of what he was last right. year. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, you know, that's that's what Kyrie's going through right now. You know what I mean? Like, What is Kyrie's injury? Well, they said he's going to be out three to six weeks. Yeah. Um, they said it's a minimal, minimally invasive knee surgery. And he went to go get a second opinion after, you know, the, the scope or whatever. No and bueno. it's like, dog, I saw how y'all did Isaiah Thomas. And it's like, I just, I don't even know y'all like that. I just got here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, so yeah, it's yeah, like, right, right. I got to go get my second opinion. Yeah. But, I, so maybe it's just him just being safe, dude. Like he's, you know, Kyrie's a free agent in like a year, in two years. Kawhi's a free agent after next season. Do like, it. He's a free agent after, he has one more season. With, Kawhi's a free Kawhi agent at the end of next year. After, and, and the next year, yeah. So he has one more year under contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what the fuck is going on? Uh, is he asking a, for a trade or something? So No, he, not that I know, but this was an interesting thing. I, I can't take credit for this. I read this online somewhere. Someone wrote it. Uh, would you, if you're the Spurs or the Cavs, would you be open to uh, Kawhi to the Cavs for Kevin Love and the Brooklyn pick? Right now? And if you're LeBron... Mm-hmm. Is that enough to make you say, let me stick around for one more year and see what's cranking? Mm. Let me sign a one year deal and see what's so going on. So, what is the Brooklyn pick going to be? That's, I mean, I guess you don't really know, know, but right now it's a top 10 pick right now. Yeah. It's rough. Um, I, 
I mean, if I'm the Spurs, I'd absolutely do it because Kawhi's gone. I'm trading Kawhi actively. Bye. No, no. I'm gone. No, no. Why is he not playing? What's going on? What injury takes that long to recover from? Well, nobody knows the dude's body better than Kawhi. He so. got a Charlie horse. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker is taking a whole season off for a fucking Charlie horse. It's like cramp, 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 cramp. That's it. You got some cramps in your thumb. What, what exactly happened here? I, hey, nobody man. knows what happened. I mean, some it's, shit is going on here. I think I, I don't think he's injured, man. I think he I don't think he's injured. And if I was the Spurs. I'm looking at I'm looking at this situation as a sign of a lack of loyalty. Mm. And I'm going, bye, get out of here. I'm trading you. Because you're not re-signing. If you're not willing to play this season, you're not willing to re-sign. Mm. There's no way a fucking Charlie horse is going to keep it's you injured. not a Charlie horse. What is it? Damn it. Ross, pop uh, if I can't see this torn, if I can't see that you got a cast or anything like that, would we just waiting for it to get a little bit better? What is it? You know what it is? Like... Probably, and and I've I've never really like had like any structural damage to the knee, but I've had like thigh injuries. This is a thigh injury, and, it's like, not knee. Muscles are different than like bones and shit. You know, yeah, what I mean? like they don't a, break. Like, I can look at an X ray, like this bone is healed, this bone is broken, this is that. With a muscle, yeah, it's like. 75% of it is like how that shit feels. Like, how can I play on this? Can I do this? Can I do that? And if the dude don't feel confident in that shit, yeah, like. It's hard, dude. That's that's why like Achilles is so tough to recover from because it's like yeah, but Achilles is different. Something tore and ripped, and mm-hmm. like if your whole thigh muscle just ripped from your knee yeah. or from your hip, that's a different situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about degenerative thigh. Like they're just making shit up with this thigh. <laughs> it's, you, you got your thumb. My thigh's not working anymore. You, you can't even describe what the hell happened. I don't it's like know. this Markel Fultz thing. Yeah. Now, I don't want to shift. We don't have to shift away from quiet just now, but like they just announced that Marco Fultz is going to be playing. You said tonight. He's, yeah, he's available to play against the Nuggets tonight or la- to last play. night if you're listening to this today. Right. Yeah. So last night. So we'll see if we play. We don't know if he plays or not, but mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is the 76 er way. Really? <laughs> I really think, and I don't think it started like this, uh. but I think what happened is they had a couple injuries and they they kept their guys out for a year. Mm-hmm. And they realized after keeping your guy out for a year, when they came back the next year, their they bodies were, were acclimated to the league. Yeah. They were dynamite. They were ready to play an 82-game season opposed to a college season. It's fucking, what, 25 games? Maybe this nothing. is part of the process. I think that, I think it's the unsaid part of the process. Uh, the unsaid part of the process is keep your – well, they're not going to get any of these high picks anymore. But like if your, you get like a high pick, freshman year. you redshirt the freshman. <laughs> you redshirt your NBA freshman, uh, right? They come back into the league the next year. And their bodies but he's are coming ready. back the same year, and he's coming back two weeks before the playoffs. Yeah, why are you bringing Which him back? Which makes it, things That's interesting. A, I guess, man. At least he's throwing them in. And well, whatever. here's well, here's maybe the question. you're willing to eat this year. Mm. Here's the question: What position are they in the? They seed? are they're a game away from third place right now. So we have we have a high seed. Mm. We have someone who could potentially help our team win. Potentially get us an even higher. They seed. could potentially have home court advantage for the first round of the playoffs. Why not? If, if we didn't have a chance of making the playoffs, all right, sit them. Because yeah. then we'll just get another lottery pick. It's going to be great. Yeah. We're in the playoffs. We're in the hunt. Mm. We're a top three seed. And we can get this kid ready for a playoff run when we know he can help us. Yeah. That bullshit about him not knowing how to shoot. We uh, record a couple viral videos like Sasquatch shit. All that <laughs> is is Sasquatch. There's a couple <laughs> videos where you pretend to see Sasquatch, and then all of a sudden he's shooting perfectly again. I've seen the videos where he's shooting perfectly. Yeah. I got a buddy who works for the 76ers. He can't tell me what's wrong with his shoulder. Yeah. He works on the team. Can't tell me what's wrong with the shoulder. Uh, I don't buy it. I think it's fake. I think the whole time it's, it's been fake. Mirrors. I think it's smoke and mirrors. I think the whole time it's been fake. And I think this is the part of the process. You sit your picks, and I don't think it's that dumb. So you think if, so you think if the 76ers were out of the playoff run, they would have just sat him for the whole rest whole of the year. season, I and they'll get a nice that. pick. I can believe and, that. And let me put on top of that: if they what? are, if if that's true, they are some mad fucking genius. Yeah, no, I mean, I can believe I can believe he's hurt. And if you Son. aren't going to the playoffs, just sit him. What just the fuck sit is him. The point? There's no reason. It's I can like what I wish the Knicks would do with every one of their players. What? I wish you'd start three guys. <laughs> what you initially said when this injury first happened was, I think before they sat everybody and then the new guy came in who was trying to, what was it, Colangelo? Jerry Colangelo Jr. And he was Brian just like, Colangelo, fuck the process. Them. You got to learn to fight through some injuries. Yeah. And that's why he played Fultz. You're hurt, you fight through some injuries. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up getting worse. He was like, all right, sit. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think happened. Mm-hmm. And I think it became real mental and whatever. And I think now that it's better, he's yeah. fine. I can believe that. I don't, I mean, maybe, and that's smart. Maybe you're just like, sit all the rookies, get them used to it, whatever. I just, I just think that maybe he's like, I'm ready to go. And the organization's like, 
Just take a say, take hey, your time, bro. Take your time. There's no take reason to rush. That there's there's no expectations. No rush. The exactly. Sixers are one of like the Sixers are one of those teams that like because of Embiid, because they're so young, because they've done they've exceeded expectations this year. Hey, they ha- they are going. No pressure. They are the one team in the Eastern Conference I do not want to see if I'm an Eastern Conference. Team. God forbid they peak in the playoffs, bro. They, God they forbid Marco Fultz can hoop they are in the playoffs. With nothing to lose. They're the four seed. They get Toronto in the first round. That's a, a second round. That's a nasty series. It is. It is. And it's going to be fun. Look, the East Coast. The East Coast. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals. Eastern Conference, playoffs are going to be better. Not only Finals, but the Eastern Conference Playoffs, playoffs are going to yeah. be really interesting. They're going to be better Everybody in the West. slept on Eastern Conference, and all of a sudden these teams start to bubble up. Milwaukee's a seven seed. That would be Boston Son, in the first round. Ooh, I'm telling you. Yeah. And That's even, nasty. Look, Boston. Obviously, Cleveland, yeah. and you have these teams that are interchanging in the top spots. It's not like one dominated the whole year. Yeah. Eastern Conference is going to be very interesting. All I'm saying about this theory, just to back it up one more time, what do NFL teams do with their number one quarterback? A lot of them sit on a clipboard. <laughs> they give them a clipboard. They say, learn the game, mm. get your body acclimated. How long did Aaron Rodgers sit? It's it's not as much as they, they used to sit him for like two, three years, but now they don't do that, that and, much. And what happens to new quarterbacks? A lot of times now they get thrown in the fire. And, and what happens to them? They burn in that fucking fire. How many new quarterbacks, how many of these first round or number one picks Peyton have Manning out? played every game. No, I mean. Peyton Manning's been, uh, it was uh, 20 years ago. I'm talking about recent in the last five no, years. No, I'm saying the how recent trend is, the, the recent trend is you play your quarterback. The and, recent trend is it, not sit your quarterback. And it hasn't panned out. I'm saying playing hasn't panned. Look at Cleveland. How many quarterbacks this did they is get like a it didn't work? That teams have where all I'm saying is it's not an absurd thing. No, That's it's all not I'm trying absurd. to say. Okay. And look, look, when you have a situation right now with the Cleveland Browns, they just got Tyrod Taylor. They're gonna draft a quarterback as well. Tyrod Taylor is there yeah. to tutor either Darnold but, or, but or to Rosen. Your point, they also had a guy named Cody Kessler who they drafted, who they sat most of the season and then started mm. playing him, and he was just bad. And that, and that happens. Don't so, get me wrong. So the evidence for the most part is you're good or you're bad. Fair enough. That, fair enough. That happens. But we we also do know that if you have time to learn the game, right? Yeah. You will probably be better. Right. If you actually have time to learn yeah. the name, get up to speed to the game, start playing against uh, NFL secondaries that are much faster than you know college. Uh, college secondaries. Yeah. So this could happen in the NBA Isn't as well. Another way to do it though, just play him less. You suit up. You just mm. don't play that much in games, and then yeah. we work you in. This is that's I the think, Spurs way. I think it's a. I think it's a great way to do it. I think what happens is. When you start to get pressure, you have season ticket holders, you have fans who are like, yo, he's playing 15 minutes, 20 minutes a game, and he's fucking yeah. murdering it. Why aren't you upping it to 40? Then you have him saying, I can play for it. Like oh, Embiid. Yeah. Remember, Embiid got yeah. a little cranky. Embiid, ha- Embiid had to cranky. get spicy with them. Like, yo, got, listen, hey, I could stop hoop. worrying about me. I could do back-to-backs. I could play more than 30 minutes a game. You're talking about like, the most competitive individuals on the planet. Yeah. I truly believe if you say... Minute restriction to them, they freak out. Yeah. But he's going to willingly say, okay, let's fake an injury. Yeah. Or he's a little injury, injured, and they say, you don't understand, buddy. This is yeah. about longevity. You get some vets to come down and say, your body's the most important thing. You got to take care it's of like your body. like you're our number one pick, dude. Like, we this are is making, a franchise like, of what you want. You are the final piece of the process, dude. But look at Ben Simmons. Look at Joel yeah. Embiid. Why would we rush this? Why, Why don't we build this back yeah. up? Why don't you work on anything you wanted to work on in the league? Da, da, da. It could have been a legit little injury. I'll tell I you think this. it's overblown. I'll tell you this. If Markel Fultz is anything close to what people have been projecting him Fine. to be, the Sixers are going to be a problem for a long, long time. And they could be time. a problem. And they're already a problem they could now. Be a problem starting <laughs> tonight. They're a problem now, dude. We're going to see. If he gets 15 minutes and he can hit some mid-range jumpers. Bro, Ben Simmons is dominating NBA games, and he cannot shoot outside and of eight feet. Why <laughs> would, then why wouldn't, and this is not, an, uh, this is not like a sarcastic question, yeah. the real question, why mm-hmm. wouldn't LeBron go there? Why wouldn't he? That's why does, people are does, looking at it. Like, here's the question. Dude. Does LeBron fit there? I think he does. I think he does. I think I, I agree with you, and, and I think he fits in two ways. LeBron, emotionally fitting is very important for LeBron. Mm. LeBron does not like detractors. Right. Everybody on the team... Got to kiss the ring. Ben Eat Simmons is his little son. He signed to his. Uh, he signed to his agency. And he's willing to. Pa- I think he'd be willing to pass the torch to Ben yeah. Simmons. Absolutely. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. And I think. And well, that's that's the thing that pissed Brown off about Kyrie leaving. If you remember those interviews, he's like, "Dog, I was ready to give him the keys. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I was ready to fall back." And then I guess this was his last like fucking his Pulp Fiction year. Where he's yeah. like, or, or Carlito's way. He's like, just when they yeah. take me out, they pull me back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he had to show the yeah, world, like, "Yo, I could still yeah. be the best player." I'm on not gonna earth. lie. I bet there's part of Kyrie that was like. I don't know how much longer my body's going to be here. Mm. 
Like, think about it. You have a small window. And this is why I also uh, empathize with Kawhi. You got a small window of greatness yeah. in your one lifetime on this planet. Yeah. Right? You have a small window to be the one of the greatest basketball players in the world and to lead your own team and to have that experience of being a franchise player on your own team. And, and Kyrie and Kawhi, potentially, they could have stayed in that situation. Mm. Right, and then he could have got a knee injury next year with LeBron, and then maybe never get that experience to get the keys. Yeah. I, I get it. There's no guarantee, I get it. man. I the, get it. I wish he didn't do it, but I get it. It's yeah. like it's like guys that are married and then they get famous. It's like sometimes you gotta t- put on a cape. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta put on a cape, get your buddy. What you, you, gonna, you gonna be faithful throughout your fame, dog? Like I'll be honest, I felt that shit. I was in a relationship right when Guy Code pop was really starting to pop off. Yeah, I see all these DMs. I'd be looking at titties. Oh, and I'd be looking at my faithful ass girlfriend. I'd be saying, "What the fuck is wrong with me, man? What I want to try this? on this cape, dog." I'm missing out on all this action, want, bro. right? Like Damn. you, you, want, you feel it. You I, that's that Russell Wilson shit, dog. Like. He got married like right when he got to the league. Son. Won a Super Bowl, got a new contract. He's like, he did the, he did what what black men never do. He left the white woman after he got the money. <laughs> he did it backwards. That's he went to the goat. That's no. why I was like, yo, then Russell married Wilson, a black woman who already got a kid. Who already got a money and a kid. I'm like, yo, I think I think I said this like a few episodes ago. I'm like, yo, Russell Wilson is the yo. black American dream, Son. dog. Like, dog. He, he literally Benjamin buttoned his fame. He got- <laughs> Dog, he got on. He got on with a white woman, yeah. won a Super Bowl, deaded her, yeah. then got the contract, yeah. then saved the black woman from this shitty relationship was that he she was with. Yeah. Took in the kid, is a great father. Well, from all yeah. intents and purposes, is yeah. a great father to the kid who's yeah. not even really his. Oh yeah. This guy's a conundrum. I'm like, what? I'm like, how do? How are we not celebrating Russell Wilson hero, all the man. time? That motherfucker is goals, dude. Are you kidding so, me? Russ, what was the first thing you wanted to do with your fame? Uh, be we- a stepdad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who the fuck says that shit, dude? Like, dog, we should be celebrating this dude every chance we get. Everybody's like, oh, Cam Newton and 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 Deshaun, dude. Russell Wilson Cam Newton showing is- up dressed like a fucking scarecrow to bed. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here, man. I love Cam, but that Russell Wilson doing whatever. Right now, <laughs> bro, I'll, you'll never hear no Russell Wilson slander from me, dude. He no. he talks like Ned Flanders, but the motherfucker could ball. Motherfucker and ball. he's he's bro, he's he's the baseball. NFL's Derek Jeter, dude. He never says nothing wrong. He says all the right things. He's team first. He's yes sir, no sir. Yo, you want your daughter to meet NFL's, him? And shit. Yeah, Derek. He's the Jeter. NFL's Derek Jeter. He wins. All he does is fucking only Derek win. Jeter would never fuck a girl with a kid. <laughs> never. He would never fuck Yo, Sierra, one girl. One girl. No, <laughs> I, yeah, I he'd think fuck he a girl would. With a kid, then, but he wouldn't he'd stay fuck with her. several girls. And then, then he would send them both gift baskets. Yeah, there you go. Here's a pacifier for your son that I'll never see. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's facts, man. Oh shit! Markel Fultz enters game, gets standing ovation. Whoa! Oh, Here we go. Oh, Here we go. This is the NBA notifications, man. Yo, 76ers fans, fill us, fill our comments and DMs. Like, yo, yo if the process us. worked, if this is all one big ruse, if he goes out there shooting like he never had a hurt shoulder and has like 20 tonight, whoops, bro. Yo, maybe the six is just mad fucking geniuses, dude. Can I say one thing real yeah, quick? Yeah, want to say just yeah, a, yeah. I guess weekly LeBron, LeBron yeah. appreciation segment for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. All these the injuries, king. okay. Yeah. All these injuries. Talk Everybody's knee is getting it. hurt. Talk Kawhi's about quadricep is done. Talk about you it. just said it. Your window for greatness is so Talk fucking small. Yeah. LeBron's window for greatness has been 15 years and is still wide yeah. open. And the man had why, 37 last night, and we take go, it for granted. Bro. I had tickets to the game. I couldn't go. Some crazy shit happened. I was so fucking depressed. Mm-hmm. What happened? But just family shit popped off. I don't want to get into it. Oh, but but uh, I had two tickets. Nobody wanted to go because we all just take LeBron for granted. Kaz went to brunch. <laughs> I didn't go to brunch. I just... He, he didn't go. I, I gotta go to this brunch. Alex was like, nah, man, I'm good. Hold we on. just take this dude for granted. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were on the group text. Hold on, hold on. He, it was like, I offered up that I was gonna eat $125 for somebody to go with me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I found somebody to go, but then I couldn't go. But th- we just took it for granted. And it's not even on y'all. This no. is what we do. Cash. And like, he had an amazing game too. He had a game I'm so yeah. fucking yeah. Like upset I missed this game. Wait, 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 I can't explain. Let me understand this. So, Kaz, you said no to go to a basketball game. 
I, I didn't. I, Cats I want to fuck white girls. I, dog, what you gonna do? Where are white women bro. in New York City? Bro. Brunch. Right dog, women, brunch. Bro. You have an eggs Benedict with some girl named bro. fucking Celeste. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, the only girl I know named Celeste is black. So yeah, no, bro, that. what was going through some your head, chick. man? What was going through your head when you decided to go to brunch or see the brunch? I'm going to tell you the truth, Akash. I'm going to tell you exactly why I didn't go tell to. Me. Uh, I think I know what he's going to say. Saturday, I was out with a few fr- I went to Sapphire yeah. with white women. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sapphire go. was a long time. Shout out to Sapphire. They showed me a great time. If you yeah. guys want to, you know, if, you, if there's anybody at they Sapphire that works there. On. <laughs> go on, keep moving. It's, it's a very us. white strip club. I don't frequent yeah. white strip clubs a lot. I don't frequent, I don't frequent strip clubs like that, period. All right, get but back to this brunch. It was a good time. I, I got drunk, and the, it was an early start time, and Akash was like, yo, you want to come to the game? And I was in bed and drawers comfortable, and I was like, yeah, I'll see you. What's if the game started at like 2, 3 o'clock, I'm like, yeah, I'll make it. I looked up the game. Tip-off was at 1. He hit me up at like 12-something. I was like, oh. I hit you up at like 10.30. Okay. Was it? Oh, damn. But was, <laughs> was there an Brooklyn almond trip. milk skinned lady next to you there was no in the morning? Almonds. Almond milk skin is funny. <laughs> Almond milk skin is funny. Almond but milk skin. Was there no, one? Bro, I, I, nothing. there was no, nothing. Nothing, nothing bro. In, in and the white woman I was hanging out with was like just friends. So, no. Just yeah. friends. Just, just friends, dude. That's the beginning of a rape story, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought we were just friends. <laughs> and then he just pushed his way and into the door. <laughs> oh, so can we talk about something? You I keep white women at a distance, my G. Bro, <laughs> we got to talk. Don't about even about hug no white women. Do you want to come upstairs? Give her no. <laughs> <laughs> Never I'm right in here. my life. I'm like, you lead the way. Just yell at this neighborhood. <laughs> Guys, I'm staying upstairs. <laughs> at the door, man. You saw I didn't go upstairs, oh, right? Oh, oh, Jose, oh, look oh, at me, you. Jose. Stop looking at your Sega Genesis. You saw I did uh, not go up with her. Oh, man. Fucking ridiculous. I know we didn't put this on the, uh, we didn't put this on the docket today, but. What happened? The whole Michael Bennett shit. Oh, oh yeah. knocking over the old yeah, that's lady. That's the funniest shit. It's the, yo, Ever. I'm not the only one that thinks this shit is fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Dude. No, he's man. a dickhead, son. dude. That guy's a dickhead. What kind son. of fucking? Ass? First off, I'm not even like it's right. allegedly. But if if an old lady says, "Hey, you can't go here yeah. because that's her fucking job," yeah, she's literally paid to say, "Don't go places," mm-hmm. and you bump the bitch out the way. That's that's not what I'm what I'm pissed about. Okay. What I'm pissed about is if you saw the fucking press conference. Did you see the press conference no, of the no, fucking no, no, cop? No. The cop was like, "Well, you know, we really don't have video and we really don't have proof, but like once a jury sees all the facts from this, they're going to be really disappointed at what they find." It's like there's All no right. facts. I'm like, that's first just, off, you just literally story. just said we have no proof or video that this happened. So then forget it. And we literally, and this is what, 14 months after the fact? And Innocence their excuse was, guilty, their excuse was, we didn't, uh, w- there were more pressing cases at the time to pursue before we came back to this. 14 months later. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just this one white, it was apparently, a, it's, it's, it's the end of the Super Bowl. It's not like you're pushing over one white woman. You know how fucking crowded the fucking I heard it was a dude in a wheelchair, field? which is the funniest. Yeah, it was. Thing she was world. a par- It was the woman. The woman was a par- woman was a, That's so fucking hold on. And he pushed, funny. He pushed her out allegedly to the ground. Allegedly, she was shoved to the Fam, ground. Fam, what's you going to? I'm a fucking. <laughs> I'm an NFL so player. You gotta push someone hard in a wheelchair like, to get them off, out of the wheelchair. It's fucking Bennett. That's, yeah, that's what they do. They push hard, they push fam. People, that's a defensive okay. lineman. You don't that's think- what they do. Ha! Push hard. He didn't even mean to. That's just his, that's his excuse me, bitch. Get over <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't being polite, dude. Like, excuse me, please. It's like, whoa. The it's poor like guy for a living this. doesn't listen to bouncers, okay? <laughs> That's his job is like, to push past like, the bouncers. Your bouncer can't be an old 67-year-old lady in a wheelchair. Dude. You would like, think that'd be the most effective bouncer because who's going to push by her? No, but the, Michael energy, Bennett? the energy is so yeah. funny because we've all been told you can't go here by a motherfucker that's like yeah, yeah. some corny yeah. fucking... Just like, roll on yeah. after me then, bitch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's like, my you, brother just what you really going to do? And I bet you had an attitude about yeah. it. I bet she wasn't friendly. Why didn't he step around her? Why he got to push her to the ground? Because the bitch was probably popping off. You know what I mean? Mm. And he was like, this bitch must yeah. not see who I am. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Miss Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> you could drive your ass back to the visitor's <laughs> locker room. Just roll your ass back. <laughs> I got a championship <laughs> ring to get to. <laughs> I think it was because he was uh, the, the, the Patriots when they won yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. He was going to go see his brother, uh, Marcellus. Or Mar- Martellus was on the Patriots, was it? No, his brother. That's uh, two Super Bowls ago. I think he was on the Patriots. Yeah, not this year. Bay. 
Yeah, this was this the one that the one that they just won. I don't think he was. I don't. I know he didn't start. I thought the year it happened this Super Bowl. No, no it happened this one. Super Bowl. We're asking if it was this one. It was the, the one. It was the year before that. One. Oh. it was the year before. That. It was fourteen was months one. ago. Okay, that's crazy. This, so I'm okay. like, are you fucking kidding me? Fourteen yeah. months later. And some old him. white lady from Georgia was friendly to him. <laughs> Come on, fam. <laughs> oh, no, dog. All that whole shit seems smelly to me, bro. Here's why I don't believe it, because I think the Bennett brothers are fun. They're funny. Yeah. So I think if some like lady in a wheelchair was popping off to Martellus, like you care, Mike, like you can't come here, he would just roll her with him. Just be like, <laughs> come on, lady, let's go celebrate the Super Bowl. He's like, stop right there. I was like, actually, no. <laughs> yeah, let's Whoosh. just go. Come to me. He <laughs> just carried of, her. You know what one I mean? of the Bennett brothers has a book that came out. Yeah, uh, Which things that make it? white people uncomfortable. That's yeah. what it's called. What is his name? Uh, I think it's Mar- Mar- Martellus. I think it's- when Martellus was with the Cowboys, he did like the Black Olympics on YouTube and like filmed himself eating fried chicken and watermelon. And shit like that. <laughs> I mean, guys got a sense of humor. Well, one guy, of them has a weird. book uh, called uh, I forget which one called out. Uh, what the is things it? Things that make white people things that make white people uncomfortable. Yeah. Who better to write a book than a six foot five, <laughs> two hundred sixty pound black guy? <laughs> think, I'm uncomfortable. No, that no. book is just as long as the TB12 method. <laughs> it's just open picture, a picture of him, of him close. and a picture of a white woman next to him. It's <laughs> like uncomfortable. That's how scary he was. The white woman just fell out the wheelchair <laughs> for a moment. Her legs worked just long enough. So, <laughs> Yo, he was so she got up on that wheelchair. She got up and started running. <laughs> and then she was, oh, I'm broken from the waist down. <laughs> it's like, the jig is up, old lady. Get the fuck out of here. That's really what happened. She got up and started running. He was like, bitch, you can walk. She was like, oops, my bad. Like, Why'd oh, you push shit. me? Why'd She's you like, push fuck. me back, man? <laughs> Mike, somebody called the cops immediately. Yeah, help me. Like, we'll help get me. to it in 14 months. The black lady. man was trying to rape me. He's like, I'm an NFL player. <laughs> That's what we got cheerleaders for. Not you, you old bag. <laughs> oh, speaking of cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. Yes. Yes. More segues. Okay, we're killing it, it bro. It. Um, so there was this cheerleader for the, the Saints that got fired. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's upset. Uh, basically what happened is they fired her because... They fired her, they said, because she had a lewd picture up on her uh, Instagram. And they have... Uh, God is good. Yeah, they have rules. It's just one to the left if anybody's watching the video. And the Saints have rules where um, their bikini-wearing cheerleaders are not allowed to post... Uh, semi-nude pictures on their Instagram. I guess the only place you could objectify them is at Saints games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how they feel about exactly. it. So she's upset because she doesn't feel like the policy is the same amongst all employees. And the policy on the team is players can talk to the cheerleaders, but cheerleaders cannot reach out to the players. And there were some rumors that she went to a party with one of the players, et cetera. And she's like, this is not fair. We're all employees of the Saints. Um, and we all should all be treated the Bitch. same thing. And this is something that you need to to learn because we're hard on hoes. This is our hard on hoes segment <laughs> of the week. Um, you are not an employee of the Saints, okay? You are a dancing girl. You're a waitress. You're a waitress for the Saints, mm. okay? And at a fancy restaurant. You're not even a waitress. What are they? You are unnecessary. That's what you are. Oh, completely. If you were gone, no one would fucking notice. Yeah, yeah. I would miss the hot dog peanut guy. You more. know who would notice? The players' wives. <laughs> <laughs> they would notice that immediately. So here's, be a lot here's less the uh, here's the um, the uh, re- regulations that you have to be a Saints cheerleader, uh-huh. according to this New York Times investigation. You must set all your social media accounts to private. You must block all current NFL players from following you. So, so. And you are not allowed to attend any unapproved events where an active player might be. They're basically trying to make it so the players don't fuck the cheerleaders. So the cheerleaders don't try to fuck the players. They're okay mm. with the players trying to fuck the cheerleaders, but not vice versa. And that's fine. The reason I was doing the the, the restaurant analogy is it is like a restaurant. A, a waitress at a restaurant is not allowed to hit on you or a famous person. If Leonardo DiCaprio is at the restaurant, a waitress can't be like, hey, can I have your number? Can mm-hmm. I do whatever? There's a level of professionalism, mm-hmm. there, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And but if Leonardo DiCaprio asks the waitress, "Hey, can I have your number?" and the waitress would like to, yeah, you get to give it up. But you're a cheerleader. You're not on the same level as the players of that yeah, fucking I don't, team. I just—it's mind-boggling that she could think that she's an equal employee. You get paid forty dollars a game, and you think you're equal. Um, Come on, you get paid illegal immigrant wages. Yeah. Yeah. And you think you're equal? Yeah, they get paid Motherfuckers some shit. outside Nothing. of the stadium selling oranges. <laughs> of this bitch. And she thinks she is equal to fucking Drew Brees? No. You stupid ass, mathematically <laughs> challenged ass. That's some fucking white women shit. I cannot fucking oh. understand. That's this idea that white women struggle. I can't fucking understand. They're mm. so entitled. She thinks she's equal to fucking Alvin Kamara. 
Dude, Run at a four three forty. Drew Bitch, Brees you live one knee real high. The lights on, dog. Like you are literally the most replaceable person on staff. Like yeah. coaches, players. Whatever, even the towel boys. It's probably you had people like, Yo, one rule, this. bitch. <laughs> Don't fuck the players. You can fuck anybody else on the staff. You can fuck the ex players. You can fuck the people in the box seats. You can fuck the executives. You can fuck the CAOs. You can fuck the agents. Mm. Don't fuck the players. There's 60 yeah. guys yeah. on the team. You can't fuck. And you know what? It's not even all. It's just. If you want to be a Saints cheerleader, if cheerleading is what you go want to, to a do, team where you could fuck the players, be like, hey man, I heard you could fuck players on the go Giants to any cheerleader team. team. Dwight Howard is on because <laughs> surely you could fuck the players there. You'll be pregnant yeah. in no time. But the Saints don't play no games with that yeah. fuck the players shit, yeah. and you breaking the rules. You're going on dates with the players. You know what? That's why the Saints are a winning organization. Goddamn it, they got their priorities oh, in order. Fuck me, fuck man. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, in Sean order, ain't fucking in around, order to dude. be angry enough, a, a defensive player to be angry enough where you're trying to injure the opposing yeah. team you can't have the cheerleaders opening up the players balls all season <laughs> just sucking their dicks on the off weeks we can't have this and don't get me wrong if you're paying these cheerleaders a full-time job there should be full-time work oh yeah okay let me oh, yeah. shit. What? <laughs> they don't pay them they pay them nothing that's what i'm saying they're no, only they paying paid them 40 dollars like, they paid shit. they're paying 40 dollars yeah, yeah. a game so that's it's all like you, criminal how much exactly but if you're paying them 60 grand a year i don't have a problem if you're giving some fucking hand jobs or something like that throughout oh the week God. At least be masseuses. <laughs> be like a be a masseuse slash cheerleader. That's totally fine uh, with me. Here's, I don't here's think... what I'll actually say. Uh, realistically, yeah. the players are allowed to hit on you. Yeah, mm. you didn't get hit on. True. Don't be mad. You ain't get chose, bitch. Oh, <laughs> apparently she did. That's the thing. Uh, apparently she's in trouble because she, she looked choosable. Her. She went. No, she looked choosable. She so didn't get chose. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. she looked like yeah. Case. Mm. <laughs> Wow. Our friend Case. Wow. <laughs> Shout out to Case Rosso. I don't she know Case, like but... Case. Case a guy. I could see, so, the, I could see the, the, the chin and the jaw. Yeah. Where, like, Look, a, let's be manly. honest. Why are these girls cheerleading? Let's let's be very honest about this, okay? If you have it's a, the thrill of performing. If you performing. have a passion for dance, I'm, I'm, I am the son of a three-time U.S. ballroom dance champion. Sandra Cameron in Sandra the building. Sandra Cameron, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a woman who had a passion for dance, okay? And you know what she did with that, that passion for dance? She didn't sit on a sideline and throw pom-poms in the air while I fucking linebackers, quarterbacks, corners, <laughs> and offensive linemen, okay? Mm. She competed in dance competitions and became three-time U.S. ballroom dance champion. If you truly love dancing, you would go do your dancing. This is not dancing. Mm. And it's not, it's not making a living either. It's $40 a game. You're here to trap an athlete. Let's be honest about what it is. And if I can further call bullshit, we're entertainers, right? So the line is always, it's the thrill of performing for 40,000 fans yeah. who are all running to the bathroom and going to get popcorn oh, yeah. and whatever the beer, whenever you're on the field. We're stand-up comics. If the Dallas Cowboys said to you, you can go out there during breaks and do 30 seconds, two minutes of stand-up. Yeah. You'd be like, are you out of your fucking... I'm not performing for a bunch of people not paying attention. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how many it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Give me a hundred people Unless in a room who want to see me. Unless I wanted to bed an NFL player, and then I would do it to if be If you want to fuck Dak Prescott, you'd if be If I wanted to fuck Dak, I would absolutely do 30 seconds of comedy in between commercial <laughs> breaks. But I think that's what's going on here, and we have to acknowledge that. Like, mm. this is the proximity. This is what you're trying to do. I don't think being a Saints cheerleader is giving you dance opportunities anywhere. Maybe you do some, like— Maybe. I don't know. Maybe don't, you do some advanced— I don't, I don't have enough interest— And that's the point. I don't have enough interest in cheerleaders to know what the next step out of cheerleading is. Like, even if you're a cheerleader, right, and the next step is, like, somewhere, you got to be, like— a fucking marquee cheerleader. You got to be a cowboy girl. You got to be a Laker girl. You like those are like even then. What what does that bring you? Uh, but I but I've I've heard like these are American staples. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like if you're the if you're part of the Laker girls, yeah, but, sure. yo, I'm a Laker girl. Okay. That's something. You're, oh, I was a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Okay, that's something. Okay, it's a credit. You're saying. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, here's yeah. the thing. You're the third most interesting <laughs> halftime spectacle. <laughs> It, just shoot the shirts. <laughs> just shoot the fucking shirts. Why do we even have cheerleaders anymore? Get that gun with the air in it and shoot the fucking shirts into the crowd. That is the most entertaining part of the game. 
Number two is the half court shot mm. or whatever they do. I don't know. Maybe you have some kid try to kick a field goal. I would literally yeah. rather watch the six year olds race each other. No, I'd rather watch the, the mascots race. The mascot facts. race is great. The facts. six year old great. Get the infants out there. <laughs> you know when the parents are making the infants compete, <laughs> the dangling in the little, little carrot in front of them. Exactly. Yeah. I, I've never, when the girls are dancing, okay, great. They're too far away to objectify. Mm. All you see is colors, okay? Yeah. It, it's possible. What we do is a very close up on just their like face, body, and tits while or ass while it's bouncing. Uh, Maybe then there'd be interest in it. But the reality of the matter is, when you're at a game, you can't even see them. But honestly, you can't like, even, you I, can't I even can't see even them. like. I'll go to like like I've been to a million Knicks games. Like I don't like the Knicks City dancers. Shout out to them. Like, can you name if, a single Nick City dancer, bro? If they got rid of the Nick City dancers, sapphires. Not a, <laughs> 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 if they got rid of the Nick City dancers, like. There's not a single Knicks fan that would like really miss it. T-shirts, you know. I mean, shoot the T-shirts in the crowd. Did you notice that they don't even dance anymore? The Knicks City dancers, no. they just shoot the shirts. Really? Dude, watch it. The shirts used to be. Remember back in the day, it was just a gun. Yeah. They shoot a few. Now they got a fucking. They got a fucking Tommy Rambo gun. gun. Yeah, yeah, Rambo. Yeah. I'm taking out Vietnamese He's with like this Home shit. Alone too. Son, <laughs> it is not a game, bro. This is some like Iraq war veteran <laughs> shit, dude. There's some For I real. Am legend fucking Son, machine guns. This is no games, bro. This is Matrix type shit. Uh, they got 15 different shirts. And they wait until the fourth rotating. quarter. Rotating. And that's when it's like, bum, 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 will do things, go to jobs or go to restaurants to be in close proximity proximity to hot chicks. Oh yeah. Hooters. Yeah. Made a living for You 50 probably make years. more Hooters than being a cheerleader Facts. to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But it made it made money for 50 years. Mm. Just because guys want to be close to attractive yeah. women with their boobs out. Dude. Yeah. I don't blame these girls who want to be close to attractive men who are athletes. Mm. I don't blame you for wanting to do that. Yeah. Let's call it what it is, Shorty. Yeah. You got caught up in a game, and you just got to be like, yo, they called me. I was yeah. trying to get one. I was Bro. trying to snag a fish. You know what I mean? And the fish got me. Here's a rule that men learn real early in life that women don't learn until they get in positions like this. The game is the game, dog. <laughs> the game is the fucking game, and you're going to get played a lot. Women aren't used to getting played. They're yeah. only used to getting played when it's somebody of a stature of an NFL player, of an actor, of somebody Ooh, famous. Ooh, they're not used to getting they're on not the same used, level. They're not used to that, man. Like, men learn that at a very early age. When a woman looks at, when a girl yeah. looks at you in fourth grade, and they're like, oh, pfft, I'm gonna go hang out with Tommy. Tommy has, like, fucking we get curved by ugly bitches. And shit. Yeah. yeah. We've been getting, we have been developing a, a layer of curve-proof skin yeah. our entire That's life. That's alligator skin. We all got alligator when skin. When a woman gets curved, they yeah. don't know what the fuck to do. When they get curved for the first time, especially when they're like older, yeah. it is real they funny have to see. No idea yeah. what to do. Shit. They call you gay. They call you yes. fucking all types of shit. They will do any. They'll make they any. They do the excuse. female equivalent of, well, fuck you then, bitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The female equivalent of that is, what are you gay? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, bro, I just don't want you, dog. Yeah. And they don't know how to handle it. Dudes, to our credit, yeah. we're not the most perfect creatures, but we've been getting practice on how to accept getting curved for a long time. Now, that's, you know, that's a whole Single other thing. be sticking up for dudes, that's man. Hard on these hoes. No, I mean, it's, it, it's a true fact. Like, I, I mean, yeah, there's. A, a, a wide spectrum of some people who don't know how to take fucking getting turned out and that's when you get like the crazies who fucking like chase you and do all types of fucked up cruel evil shit which you know they could burn in hell but like 80% of other dudes that I've ever been in contact with have been learning how to take curves their entire life Absolutely. and take it in fucking stride yeah. and I think that's just what she learned man like she probably has never been curved in her life she's, a, she's the NFL cheerleader actually real quick Segway to our asshole of the week. Nice. Perfect segue. As we're yes. being hard on these hoes. Yes. Asshole of the week. Yes, go for it. This week mm. is not a sports star. No. He's a rapper whose rap I don't even really care for that much. <laughs> Logic. Logic. Oh, I thought Never it was Gino thought. Emma. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna oh. get to him too. We're gonna get to him too. We yeah, got... maybe we, this is a, this is a two asshole week. We got two assholes. <laughs> asshole wow, of the week is asshole. Logic. This is a quick right, one. Let's go uh, quick one because I gotta run out of here. Logic sat his wife down, yeah. who he always posts pictures of and yeah. says he's so in love with, and basically. 
Eventually, yeah. they got divorced, and the story. Hey, did you know he logic? rapped about her all Wait, in like. Did you guys know Logic is half black? Did you guys know that? Did you know? I didn't know. Did you know? Hey, Alex, did you know Logic is half black? Did you know he's biracial? I don't know if he's ever mentioned that in his in his. Oh, did know. he ever mention that in any of his songs? I think he, he is. Oh, he is. Okay, I, I haven't heard check. enough of his songs yeah, to know. Yeah, because I, I didn't no. know if he's ever mentioned that he, in his music. I, I've but heard. He's, he's half black. There's a rumor yeah. that he's yeah, black. Yeah, he's half black. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, man's yeah, name is Logic. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, you're talking like anyway, but go all half black. You know, without until he gets pulled over by the cops, and then it's oh yeah, my name is Alfred. Dude can rap though, but other than that, sat his wife down and said, "Listen, I was happier when I was single. I think it's time for a divorce. You want to wear the cape, dog?" Want to wear that? A man hate? got famous, and it's time. I don't hate on him, bro. Um, hey, when you when you're a, when you're a girl that marries a dude before he gets famous, and he gets famous, you can't keep the same energy. Nah. You gotta increase your energy. No, but she's pretty though. Gorgeous. Don't matter if she's pretty. You know how many gorgeous women are probably throwing at him right so, now? Huh? It you is know, funny though more? to see Logic this fucking. <laughs> Horny ass. Look, he's, he's wearing a sweatshirt that says everybody. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, all yeah. these guys are just dudes. Yo, yeah. Aziz is just a like, dude. Logic he, just a dude. He looked like the kid from the Sandlot that made out with the. Uh, Yo! He, he looked like the kid. Yeah, he got his Wendy Clifford and then he left yeah. her, fam. He, he made Wendy out with the lifeguard. It's the, grown oh, up, it's the grown up version of the kid who made out with the lifeguard, right? <laughs> Sneaky ass Holy motherfucker. Shit. You married that lifeguard, bitch. You divorced her ass once you got famous. <laughs> Oh, fuck. How you leave Wendy like that, man? Nah, anyway. She's pretty, though, man. She's going to be fine. Of course. She'll be all right. But she right. came up right. I honestly don't think he's an asshole for that. Son, I, th I, I think, think it's honest. It's... I think it's a pretty mature thing to be like, you know, he probably didn't cheat. He probably was about to cheat. I was like, you know what? No, it's more funner than like having to turn down all this pussy. <laughs> Being Not single. having to turn down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And he was, and he sat her down, and then he, and you know, women claim they, and and you know what? He's probably she probably thinks he's a hassle now, but in the long run, she's gonna thank him for it. She she's gonna thank, thank him for it. She got a settlement. She ain't got no got kid. They he got kept no kids the house. Together. He kept the car, but she got some kind of money. She got some money. They didn't have no kids together. Right now. They got all this shit together. She's probably gonna. It, it's the rip the scab off theory, dog. Yeah, like you know, hundred bucks. She'll be in Toronto next week. Oh, big what's, facts. What's in Toronto next big week? Big facts. Because Drake always likes to fuck. Me. <laughs> 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 She's gonna be in Drake's Instagram story. Yeah, what's I'm the only half black rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, shit, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he's that much of an asshole, man. Like, if you want, if you want maturity, if you want honesty, if that's what women say that they want, that's a pretty honest, mature thing. It's like, hey, I'm not happy no more. Nobody wants that honesty. But they don't. They don't. I don't. I'll be honest. Give me a, give me a tasty lie. Fuck yeah, give, <laughs> give me a, a tasty lie. lie Put sometimes. your dick in a girl. How does that feel? You want her to be like, I've had bigger. <laughs> <laughs> shit is all right. This shit is about regs. Regs. You're all right. Straight. You're straight. You're straight. <laughs> My asshole of the week. Goes to a guy who has to pretend he's not dominant. <laughs> who has to pretend? Who has to feign interest for the good of his entire sports? Because all he does is fucking dominate. And when you hear him talk and you listen to his interviews and watch him do what he does, you're just like, "Dog, why don't the jig is up, dude? Why are you giving me this shit?" He's probably the greatest women's coach of all time, you know, outside of Pat Summit. Yeah, rest in peace, Pat Summit. Gina Oriema. First of all, the greatest women's coach of all time is Iceberg Slim. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even a question, all right? He's getting Shout these girls to give him buckets. Dog. He's not getting them to give him dollars, Shout bro. Out Dave Chappelle, dog. I'm watching uh, the Final Four, uh, the men's Final Four. And it's all this intrigue, all these big time schools going down and all the, and Leola, Chicago, taking all these headlines and Sister Jean and right. upsets and all this stuff. And this is why it's a billion dollar tournament. Because market you just it right. never know what could happen. It's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You know why the women's NCAA tournament is not popping? The women we know what's going <laughs> to because... <laughs> <laughs> the women Terrible holding the basketballs. People. Terrible yeah. people. But the reason why. Listen, the are they better than me? Yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't have the audacity to make anyone watch me play basketball. I'll be honest. You know, there was, you know what there was... I mean? Yeah, a woman will give me buckets all day, but I'm not gonna have the fucking gall to put myself on ESPN playing basketball. <laughs> do women get scholarships for sports? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do they really or no? 
Oh god, this no, is going I'm dead so ass. left. No, this so I'm dead ass so serious. Left. Do they really? Yes, they do. They do. <laughs> they get sports scholarships? This is not the yeah. 60s. They absolutely do. <laughs> for what? You're a terrible human being. I just want to do Oh my god. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> no, you look Wait legitimately shocked. Wait a minute. They get sports. They get sports scholarship. He's lying. Oh my god, please. No, I'm oh not lying. God. I thought that they would get scholarship for certain sports that they're better at. Oh my god, no. Like what? Get... Like equestrian. T- title nine, bro. No, women you know are better title than nine is they're because they're, they're they weigh less. <laughs> that ass. They're they're better than men at equestrian. I know every sport women are better than men at equestrian. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and then that's then it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Don't have to but get no, in all seriousness, under balls or whatever. So, so they get, they um, get full sports scholarships. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> they do. What? You, you, are, you Yo, look completely this is blown nuts, away, by this. dude. Hold on, this is nuts. So you thought they you thought they paid to play basketball? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like a club. I thought it was like, um, yeah, like one of the intramurals or something like that. I thought it was like a intramural thing. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is mind boggling to me. It's so, terrible to think. So th- you're saying, know. no, this is now. The beginning every this season. Thing. I actually is do. collecting jersey fees. I actually do. At one point, I no, actually no, no. did I, enjoy women's college basketball. When it was like, when Tennessee was good, yeah. when UConn was good, when North Carolina was good, it was yeah. actually enjoyable. Is this what and you talked like, about during brunch? And this is, <laughs> what the fuck is going on over here? It was enjoyable. What the hell is this guy talking about? When, I'm telling you, man, is, that was when Cass had a girl. Dude, dog, dude, it was yeah. different. Dude, yeah, you're a different man now. Your future was female. You thought. <laughs> then you saw what the future brought. Now you said we hard on these hoes in 2018. Exactly. Well, we ain't in the future yet. <laughs> <laughs> we in the present. Oh, God damn it. I tried women's sports. I tried. Yo. <laughs> but here's what I'm, this is, I think the best argument. Mm. This is crazy to me. I think the best <laughs> argument. I feel bad we completely fuck Kaz's point. No, no, no. I no, had no, a point. No, no, no. We're going to we get back to it. We're going back to it. But I think the best <laughs> argument for paying. Uh, uh, college athletes <laughs> <laughs> is that <laughs> like <laughs> is that women's college athletes are getting the same <laughs> tuition as men like that's mind boggling oh, to me that you could have a whole stadium filled oh, a billion dollar industry <sighs> for men and they're getting the same free tuition as the women. The women aren't bringing in that money. No. You're telling me the female sports team is bringing in as much as the male sports team? <laughs> There's no way. That's unfair. That's oh, truly unfair. Man. I guess. Okay, but then I by your guess. logic, you, you shouldn't get a scholarship for like gymnastics yeah. or swimming or any of those sports, male well, or female. But you a lot can of these get a scholarship like- for gymnastics <laughs> or swimming? I thought you only get scholarship for the ones that people show up to. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the- That's why there's no money to pay them. Because <laughs> no. you're just letting everybody get scholarships. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, in theory. Hold on. <laughs> in theory. In theory, yeah. Why are you not but- trying to get a scholarship? <laughs> Oh, Not every know, sport dude. is scholarship. That's know. impossible. Oh no, that's impossible. That's mad, mad every every. There's, a, there's actually a qui- a very quietly kept, very quietly kept Indian hustle where you get good at like fencing, and then you can get into like Princeton. No, really? probably no scholarship. But, but they yeah. don't do athletic scholarships at Princeton. They do academic. Yeah, so you probably sports. won't get a scholarship, but it's like an easy in because mm. they need a team. Mm-hmm. All these guys need teams. Honestly, we should cut that shit. I think any sport that and that's a big that's a big thing they talk about with paying athletes is like, are you you are you? I think by Title Nine you're supposed to give everybody the same, but you can't pay the fucking swim team. Nobody they don't make any money. But you're not paying. There's not even seats in the swimming arena. How am I supposed to watch? It's not a college football team where you're paying like fucking forty kids tuitions or in like 10 of them are walk-ons or whatever like yeah. for a swimming team you're paying maybe I don't know how many people on a swimming team maybe like 6 okay you know what I'm saying like how many women get a scholarship on a team <laughs> Maybe tw- 10 and maybe like two walk The whole no, team. Stop it. Yo, stop come it. on, dog. Stop you can't be this. You guys, can't. You can't. Guys, you can't. The yo. whole team. You cannot be this. Ab- the whole God, team is getting a scholarship. <laughs> the last girls can't even make left-hand layups. 
I understand the top two are girls on the team. So wrong. That they could dribble with both hands. My entire point was just drove off the rails, though. All right, so, uh, all right you know R.E.M. Huh? Nah, okay. he's an asshole, whatever, it's done. It's <laughs> we really just no, cut the dick I'm off. Sorry. Right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. I had a mind-boggling experience right here. I didn't know that women were getting I think Gino's an asshole because every year he has to pretend that this is a competitive sport, but he blasts teams by like 80 points a game, and I don't know. Gino's kind of a jerk. So you think like, he's a dick? I think he's a dick, man. Like it's like why does he? How does he pretend to... it's going to be competitive though? I don't know. Because like he's, they go, you know, they right. have like these during the game interviews. They're like, oh well, you know, I don't know, like how we're playing and yada yada yada, and like they'll be up by like sixty. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Look at what can we do to right improve? He's and yada, clapping yada. like he wants his players to play harder. Like if you watched, if you uh, you you didn't watch it, but if you watched the championship game last year, yeah. they finally lost. Wait, they have a, they have a championship game? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, they got a tournament. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there a is there a March Madness for girls? <laughs> March sadness. Clearly you know. Is it March Madness for girls? March sadness. It, wait, why don't they just call it the menstrual month? All- <laughs> That's the real March Madness, right? When you get all sixty four teams cycling Yo. up at one point in time. <laughs> That's yeah. mad. You oh, want some nice. madness? There you go. Oh. And them tampon strings dangling down yeah. from the shorts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. So they got oh, 64 geez. teams. In Poor Kaz, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really tried. Yeah. Point, man. He wanted right, to so make really a point. Really tried. That, it's, it's, it's over. It's, it's over. over. It's, it's over. No, we can bring it back. Nah, nah, no, 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 it's, it's all done. Dog. It's no, all good. You can do it. No, no, no. You killed cool. this man's it's, energy. It's I done. don't. I didn't even have it anymore. I had a thing. We let him. Then you let him build up a little more momentum, and then you cut his dick off again. Just dick and balls with. They got a tournament. <laughs> so, You're okay. a fucking dick. With all due respect, oh with all due respect, it's wild. They got a tournament, right? It is. A That's lot. wild. It is. Like it used to be a competitive I, tournament. That's why I'm saying he's an asshole. Yeah, but it used to be good. Guys, it listen, I've ref a couple games watch. at the guys. boys and girls club that were highly competitive. <laughs> I didn't think they needed to be nationally televised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Highly competitive. <laughs> but what I'm trying to understand is you're telling me there's 64 colleges. <laughs> <laughs> they have girl basketball teams? Wait, is that... No, no, I'm like... Wait, yeah. no, 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 no. This is real. Are you saying every college got a boys and girls basketball team? <laughs> it's called Title IX, bro. Yes. Every... Title IX? <laughs> Title IX. What's that? If you're good... <laughs> Every Division One school. He can't even keep a straight face. You have a male He can't even keep a straight face. Stop indulging no, this what's shit. What's Title Nine? What's Title Nine? It basically says if you have a team for men, yeah. you have to have a team for women as well. That's Why? What it is. <laughs> Because it, it's I don't know Fuck I lost my point Whatever It's done This sucks I don't know <laughs> And I never get I never get like Driven off point I'm like completely lost now I'm like damn I didn't, I didn't even watch the tournament never I just coming know back from uninterrupted. You're going to LA And you're never coming back dog Nah nah fuck it It is uh I, Gino R.E.M. is an asshole He's a jerk We know you're going to win The NCAA tournament you don't have to pretend that it's competitive. You're going to win by 50. Stop. They play five on five? <laughs> <laughs> no, is it, it wait, is, is it, is if it, you're not, full if you're not court? watching this on the YouTube. Is it full court? <laughs> not watching this on the YouTube. On. He's legitimately <laughs> flabbergasted. Wait, are they playing it's... full court five on five with subs? <laughs> Do they have jerseys? Do they just wear their aprons onto the court? No, I don't no, that's a good. That's the next thing I was going to ask. <laughs> Do they all have to wear the same color? They all bring like the same color? <laughs> so in women's tennis, is it just instead of rackets, it's just rolling pins? I yeah. That's what, that's what we're going with this. I, I don't know. I lost, <laughs> I lost it. I don't worry about this. All right, my bad, yo. It's all good. All right, so Gino Ariyama, right? No, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Alex, we're fucking done. Go to another picture, goddammit. Oh, we're fucking done. I tried women's sports. I really tried this time. I really had a good point, man, and this I lost it. uninterrupted. You don't got to pretend to give a fuck about women's I, sports I, here, No, bro. I give a you fuck. You're single now. It's over. I give a fuck about UConn women's basketball. Okay. They're Who, fucking Okay, do- let me ask this. I love just, dominance. Let me ask as this. A question, dominance. As a question, just one question. <laughs> oh, yeah. have, no, 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 no. I I think this is we uh, we should commend the female athletes because clearly they manage money better than the male athletes, right? 
because yeah. you always hear male athletes talking about, oh, I'm so hungry. I need, I didn't have even money for a sandwich. <laughs> Right? Like you always hear the male athletes saying that, right? Like, right. oh, it's so hard being a NCAA player. I didn't have any money for even a sandwich. <laughs> right? But you never hear girls saying that. Probably because they make their own sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, but for real, they do manage their money better, right? Ah. If they're getting the same allowance, you never hear a girl violating. I've, I've never heard of a girl violating NCAA protocol. I've never heard of a girl uh, overspending or taking meals from well, an agent. To, I guess. Well, I guess to your point. Is that fair? To your point. I mean, there aren't. There's not millions of dollars waiting for them in the next level. Ah, so, so not it's not much. like. You know, but like, they're not going through the allocated money. Honestly, for most. For most women's sports, UConn women's basketball is like as big as it gets for them a lot of times, even if they do go to the pros, unless they go overseas or whatever. <clears throat> I'm talking about crowd size, I'm talking about, you know, revenue interest. Like a lot of times, like that's as big as it gets for them. So yeah. it's not like I'm bringing in these millions of dollars and I'm entitled to these millions of dollars in uh, a couple of months when I get drafted. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to make a stink if I can't fucking afford to pay it for a sandwich. Right. I don't know. I try to make sense. <laughs> no, no, no. Good. Now I you're just, deflated. I don't want you to be deflated. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing at the fact that I know all he's doing is setting up a I joke. know. I see, the I, see the, I see the wheels turning. No, I'm like, I'm like, why, how did I get roped I'm into not, this? I'm not. How did I get? <laughs> I'm just trying to understand it. It's like the fishing hook. I'm just like taking yeah. the bait. I'm Do the like, girls yeah. that not play, they're also the chef? <laughs> 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 Can no, I ask a real no, question? No, weak. I could have done Can I ask that. a real question? Go, 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 go. Who wins in a basketball game? Yeah. UConn women yeah. or like an Oak Hill or one of these powerhouse high school men's teams? I didn't question. Like Montreverde or Oak Hill? Oak or, Hill. Or... Oak Hill. It's got to be well coached. I don't think UConn will score one single point. I don't think they'll score one single point. I don't think people understand like how many high D1 players like these like big high school powerhouses put out and it's not being sexist at all whatever, you've played against like, them I've played against Oak Hill and at that point they went on to put in like four players in the NBA like that only only that team and one of them was Kevin Durant so let's so it's like you're, you've played against these elite teams yeah let's be honest if an Oak Hill plays even some college team yeah they'd probably yeah, be competitive they'd prob they would be competitive I'm not gonna go out and say they'd win but it'd be competitive. And they they have at least one player, like each one of these Oak Hill or Montverde, or whatever teams, have at least one player that should be playing in the NBA, but has to do his one year in college. So it's like, they're already better than most of the college players anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you think NBA players can be, you know, there'll be NBA players or women's college basketball players. It's a fair assessment to be like, yeah, somebody's. If like, you think even this week, this is the McDonald's All American game, right? I think the McDonald's All American game is going on right now, or or, or tomorrow, or something like that. Yeah. A lot of these guys have no business going to college. <laughs> like they are a fucking elite. At least five so, of Oak them. Oak Hill versus the LA Sparks. Mm -hmm. Oak Hill, guys, guys, it's okay. I'm telling you. I'll tell you this. Size wise, I don't think they match up. They obviously don't match up. The women, but I, no, yeah, the women don't match up. These are but, 16, 17 year old boys. But some of the some but of the guard, some of the guards six, are eight, yeah, you got, and you have legit like probably six four guards. You know, mm. this is a, what is a power forward in the in the WNBA. Six. No, four. I'll be honest. The only like, and I'm, and you know me, like I'm not the you know I'm not gonna indulge. He's in, not like, us. The, I'm not you guys. No, yeah, I know. But like <clears throat> the one the one thing I always give women's basketball is. Their guards, by and large, are probably more skilled than similar sized guards huh? as as their male counterparts because yeah. they have to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they're they're shorter. They got to shoot better. They got to be able to finish around the rim. They're not dunking on nobody. They don't have to rely on like right. athleticism like that. Like they have to be more skilled. Fundamentals are there. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of high school players that get to the to, to the high college oh, player athleticism. with no left hand. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they they have to be. Michael so, Jordan. That, exactly. So yeah. you know. When it, when it comes to like women's guards, I don't think I think they still give like an old kill some run. But when you're getting to like you know like a Michael Porter Jr. or a it's Ben Simmons or Kevin much. Durant, it's even at the high school age, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm still taking these guys. It's too no. much. It's, yeah. it's 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 not sexist. It's just sheer physicality, man. Yeah. It's testosterone. 
No. There's nothing that they can. It's not do. sexist. It's just I just I, I watch a lot of basketball. It passes the eye test. You've I'm played like, against. It's yeah. different. Like Akash and I are speaking, and you could say that we're pieces of shit. <laughs> we're sexist, etc. But we haven't played against the elite guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You've played against elite high school basketball. Yeah, and you've also played against girls. I'm sure yeah. that are you know maybe yeah, yeah. I played against, I played against some good girls girls right. players. So you just yeah. feel another difference. It's not man. I'm not being sexist at all. It's like and dog. If you ask. There's another ask level girl, to son, these certain players where you look think, at them and they're like, yo, no, it's, it's different. This guy, like when what I saw when I saw Ben Simmons in high school, I was like, this guy has no business going to college. Wait, you saw him in high school? Yeah, he used to play at Montverde. Montverde was coached by my high school coach. In uh, well, he coaches them now. He's the coach of St. Patrick's. He runs Mount Verde Academy. That's the same school Joel Embiid went to, Ben Simmons, D'Angelo Russell, all these guys. You look at them in high school, you're like, this guy has no business going to. That's why he goes to fucking LSU, so you can do whatever the fuck you want and get the fuck out. Oh, so they're it's not like, gonna. It's like <clears throat> dog, you don't even have to take classes. Dog, like he even like if you watch the the, the documentary that Ben Simmons did on on Showtime, yeah, like it's what he openly says. Like th- th- there's like a whole scene where like a coach has to come up to him because he's not going to class. And he's like, dog, like he looked. They have a first person view where he's talking to the confessional cam. He's like, it's like I don't give a fuck about class. Like it's like I can't even. There, there's a scene where he goes to like a, a department store, like a Target or some shit like that, and he can't buy fucking socks. And he's like, dog, it's like, these guys are selling my jersey in the school. I can't even fucking afford to buy socks. Like, why the fuck do I got to go to class? This is Ben Simmons. This is the probable NBA rookie of the year. And motherfucker got a point. Reasonable. Nobody gives a fuck what he did in LSU. Reasonable. He's going to be playing against probably LeBron James in the first round of the NBA playoffs this year. Yeah. You think he gives a fuck about going to club, about going to fucking social economics class at LSU? Like, no, he doesn't. And there's a lot, and there's always at least three, four, five players in the high school that come out and absolutely have no business being in college. None. So, I don't know. You can make a sexist or not. It's, it's, it's just what I've seen. Hard on Hose 2018. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect way to end it. It's been another episode of Flagrant 2. Thank you so much for listening, man. Uh, check out our dates. Uh, you guys got anything to plug? You want? Oh, yeah, it? shit. Uh, watch Un- Uninterrupted to the Hell Score. Yeah. Uh, Featured my man Big Wolves, Meg Scoop, uh, Taj on uh, Uninterrupted and uh, Spotify every Friday. And, indulge um, in that. Indulge in that. Yes, please indulge some in that. Do subscribe. Up, some do say Palooza, Atlanta, Georgia, April 21st at the Masquerade. Pull up. Uh, Hammerstein Ballroom, May 20th, New York City. We coming home. Tickets are already flying. Make sure you come to that as well. Russell Rap Podcast every Saturday. My man Emilio Sparks, my wrestling podcast. I'm going to get back to that soon. I'll be at Wally Mania in New Orleans with Emilio uh, doing my whole pro wrestling shit. A lot of shit to do. So, um, Killing it. Yeah, man. Um, Let's do it. I got to run out of here, so is it okay if I drop some? Yeah, shit? go for All it. Right. Do it. Uh, j- uh, thank you guys so much for coming out to Views from the Sis, man. Thank you, Toledo, for pulling up. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'm here in the city, but the week after, um, April, I'm going to be out on the road. I got Rochester, New York, to Carlson. Then I'm going to be uh, in New York City, Gotham Comedy Club. Get your tickets for those shows. That's the 13th and 14th of April. Get them tickets. Um, I want to sell them bitches out, man. We all sell five that shows. bitch out, yo. Let's sell them all out. Yeah. Then uh, Sunday, I got a few tickets left for the second show in Toronto. That's April fifteenth. Then I'm going to be in Philly the twentieth and the twenty first, and then I'm going to be in Texas that last weekend of of April, and that's going to be uh, Dallas, Plano, and then on Sunday I'm going to be in Houston. So go get all them tickets. Gobble them shits up. For more dates, go to theandrewshows.com. Uh, thank you guys so much. Make sure Asshole you get the Army, mer- get out get there, the man. Merch, man. Yeah. Yes. Get that flavor to merch, man. Com. Yes. Make sure you did that. Uh, and then I got to run. I love you guys, man. Thank you guys so much. Later. Yo, last plug. Come to the American, the ABDC comedy show. Yes. It's uh, going to be a dope show. All brown comics. Everybody's funny. Everybody's going to slap this Friday, 7.30 and 10 o'clock. Get your tickets at carolines.com. Yes. Friday, Caroline's on Broadway. They're giving us the whole night. We in that bitch, man. We Asshole Army. Whenever you see me, Andrew, Akash, Alex, anybody promoting anything, come out in that bitch. Throw your Tell assholes up. up. Make sure, make y'all motherfuckers heard, man. Like, all we got is you guys. So make sure that you guys are out there deep, showing love, and uh, we'll show love back, man. We might be, well, we're like 99% going to be broadcasting from a very special place next week so we'll keep you updated on that and then um i think that's it alex you got anything please don't send alex any more dicks please don't send him any more dicks he's, he's, he's taking enough he's taking enough man nah. fuck that no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> fuck we talking on. about man come on bro <laughs> no more dicks alex. nah i got uh my first interview why well, 
got interviewed for the first time um, on a podcast called I Game Around. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah That's the fuck that I'm out. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's it. dope. Family Let's making do it, moves. Man. Yes, support, sir, man. support, man. That's all we got is your support. S- support Flagrant 2 wherever the fuck we doing, man, because we do it for y'all. So we'll see y'all next week and keep that shit tight, man. Later. God bless. Peace.